Hey everybody, welcome back to Gridiron TV. It's national championship time and we're about to bring you the biggest game of the year live. It's a Sterling Klansman against the Birmingham Lions. We're back in the commentary booth guys, Cecil Martin, Stuart Dick. Let's quickly, quickly, quickly recap the first game for anyone who didn't make it to the first one and now we're going to go right to it. So first game, Swansea Titans, Royal Hallway Bears. Let's give a quick summary. Uh, domination by the Swansea Titans uh, came out just dominating all three phases of the game and, and played hard and, and I feel like the you know the Royal Holloway Bears they, it was a tough day but they did some good things and flashes and probably played their best ball probably in the last five minutes yeah I have to say uh, they came back into the Bears late in the game but it was a bit too late I mean their wide receiver Jake uh, Wickham got 10 receptions 160 yards and two touchdowns before getting ejected uh, so he had some kind of day but we saw the running game the power of that Titans offense just was too much early on it wore them down wore them down wore them down and they just Bears didn't have an answer until the last quarter okay so congratulations to the Swansea tit Titans but with no disrespect to either team let's move on to the big game it's Sterling and Birmingham we spoke about them earlier two dominant teams I mean where do we even begin with him let's start on defense stingy stingy defenses which have really brought them here and they're surely going to show big today well I mean you know you look at a dominant team performance by the Sterling Klansmen where on defense they've only given up one score and that was at the end of a game and then you're looking at a perennial powerhouse like the Birmingham Lions that have been here before they know what it means to play championship football and you know they've just they've just proven that they know how to win the big one and so you know from a stingy defense perspective you know you got to give the edge to the Sterling Klansmen but then when you look at what Birmingham has been able to do over the course of the last four to five years you can't you, you, you can't discard you know who they are you know and, and what kind of a team they've had and so it's, this is a clash that I don't think anyone anyone can can predict now you might be a Sterling Klansman fan and you might be a Birmingham Lions fan and that's great but at the end of the day when you're trying to analyze football and what team might win and what team has the edge today might be the the toughest one that you may have and so one of the indicators is that you know uh, Robert Orr the head coach of the Sterling Klansman has decided to do his warm-ups at another field a another a another indication that you know mo both of these teams don't know each other very well at all except for last year when uh, the Sterling Clans were knocked out of the playoffs by them. Yeah, it's going to be a phenomenal game. Both teams keeping their distance pre-game. Um, very, very well drilled. So we saw Birmingham right here with Coach Wayne Hill. As soon as the last game was over, they came in, did the warm-ups immediately into drills. And that's just a sign of a really well organised and classy unit. It definitely, and I mean, we've seen it before. Birmingham Lions are here year in, year out. Wynn Hill coaches the GB students as well. He's a great head coach. And you saw, you saw last year what he did. They were down for most of that game. But he knows his guys and he put them in a position to win and they came back and won it late. So he knows what he's doing. The Klansmen, they've walked that Salt High Division year on year now as well. And they, they gave the Lions a very good game last year. It was a last minute, last minute loss in the playoffs. So I, I'm, just excite, I'm just excited for some more football. It is, and we talk about the sort of organisation of Birmingham. I've had the privilege to be able to see a lot of the Klansmen this year. They are equally organised, they are equally as focused. They don't let anything get involved. They just want to play one play at a time, and the guys just do their job, which is fantastic. And everybody buys into that, which really helps to not only raise the standard, but just raise the efficiency in every aspect of the team. Mm. You know, I think one of the great things you guys have both talked about is... is you know, both of these coaches, Robert Orr for the Sterling Klansmen and Wayne Hill for the Birmingham Lions, they run a tight ship, you know, and what you're going to see out here is a, a well-coached team that is disciplined, you know, that unlike the first game where there was a bunch of penalties, you'll see a minimal amount of penalties. Now, obviously, these are two tough, hard-nosed physical teams, so penalties may come as a result of that, but it won't be sloppy football at all. The first game was not sloppy football in any way, shape, or form. But what you're going to see is another level of, of competency and, and talent and, and organization as they go through the course of the game. You just have to look at the amount of coaches each, what each team has got. Yeah. In, the, in most levels, you've got five, six coaches at most at each game. If you look at the list, there's 10, 15 coaches on each, which gives you extra preparation that can concentrate on a certain position and they can get the best out of their individual guys. So they're only coaching four, maybe five guys at once 
whereas other teams are coaching all a team with certain coaches. Yeah, so the resources are stretched a little bit. They can't quite focus in as much. And we were talking about coaching and technique and all those things in the first game. We had a chance to speak, speak with the guys at American Football Development who really want to focus on technique and improving people's games and making them understand what it is they need to do to get to that next level. Uh, and we'll hopefully try and speak with Derek McBride uh, again on the show and we'll maybe get you guys to bring in your questions. But just like the first game and just like always in fact you can always interact with us online we had so many responses on Twitter uh, getting you guys involved in the game so if you want to do that just tweet us at gridan underscore TV or find us on Facebook at gridan TV uh, and if you really want to you can email separately which is info at gridan TV co uk but throughout this we're going to be announcing different competitions we're going to be announcing the winners of some previous competitions um, and we're just going to ask you questions we want to hear from you guys the guys out there that have been following both teams separately and seen them every week or you know all the time they can give us the kind of insight that not everybody out there gets well that's where we got our stats from earlier on i mean people are watching the game recording the stats of their friends of the people who are in the team and, and that that helps us a lot and it adds something to the whole game for us yeah, that would be really cool. I mean, you know, I think that as we watch this game, we're going to see a lot of big plays, and it would be great to not just publicize, you know, the guys out here on the football field that's playing, but those of you that are watching, that are, that are collecting those stats, you know, we'll read your name off here and sing you a shout-out, and uh, it'll help us bring a better experience to the overall experience for everyone who's a part of this. Yeah, we're also going to give a shout-out to all our uh, funders and backers, the people that got us here to what is our 17th national championship game here on Gridiron TV. It's not even been two years, but we've already managed to bring so much football and we really want to do it more as a team and be back here again through the summer and, and, and beyond. It it's really makes a difference, I think, to bring these kind of events to people who can't travel to Leeds or whatever it's going to be. Yeah. I mean, just like we've got teams of like about 120 players playing, all their families, not all of them are going to be able to make it and they can get watch their sons play it on a big stage thanks to Gridiron TV. Yeah, so remember, tell us where you're watching from as well. It's not just your questions and uh, thoughts on the game. Tell us where you're watching from. We've had Italy, we've had America, uh, other parts of Europe. Um, I think I saw one coming in from Asia as well. So, you know, there's a lot of people watching around the world. And like you said, friends and family back in America maybe or in Europe who don't normally get to see their sons play football giving them that opportunity to see them in on the biggest stage of the year. We may be getting a big Dutch following because I know the Klansmen have a few Dutch players in their squad so we'll get a few Dutch fans well, there we go. watching today. <laughs> Excellent. So we're just waiting now for the announcement of the teams that are going to come out the tunnel any moment now and we'll bring that to you but does anyone feel brave enough to give a score prediction? Well you know I will say this guys I, it's, it's coincidental that I'm here uh, my first championship here in Leeds and two teams that I have a lot of familiarity with from a, from a grassroots and, and, and start of doing um, you know American football development in the United Kingdom you know it's these two teams uh, I got a chance to meet Wayne Hill and Robert Orr in Loughborough at the British American Football Coaches Association I spoke at that event um, we did a, a grassroots football combine and training session at uh, Birmingham I did the coin toss at an explosion event a couple of years ago and then caught a mega bus all the way to Inverness to help with the uh, war ceremony for our team there. And we've done a few different camps at the Sterling Klansman's facility up in Sterling, Scotland. So uh, I'm really excited to be able to see both of these coaches and these teams of which a lot of these kids I've gotten a chance to see develop over the last few years. It's, well, good, it's good to see the Swansea Titans are coming to take their seat to watch this national championship game as well. Absolutely, yeah. and we're welcome, first of all, to this national championship game. It's your Birmingham Lions. Oh yeah, they're walking. Steph two by two. Stefan Rowden and Joshua Vines leading the team out. So there's a guy by the name of Greg Freeman, he's a special teams coach. He was one of the guys that was playing for this team that I feel like was part of that beginning regime of what we see Birmingham football is today. It's great to see him out there staying a part of the organization, helping the tradition continue. Yeah, he had a hell of a game last year in the National Championship game. He was all over the field at that safety position. And he'll be able to put that knowledge and help some of those players like AJ Crabb 
who we've seen before play on this stage. So they've got the experience there playing in the National Championship game. And that's really important to retain that talent, and retain those guys within the organisation so they can pass off all their first time experience from being a part of that team. They know what it's like to be here, they know what it's like to go through the season and that's always going to be a great thing for the rookies and the guys coming in first of all to know that they've got that kind of advice available to them. I, I talked about the small squads in the first game. Look at the amount of players on the side and gives rotation, gives that depth, you can stay fresh for the game. Yeah. And that's what these two squads have. So here we go. We've seen the Lions. It's time for the Sterling Clansmen to make their appearance. All the way from Scotland. Keep an eye out for the Claymore. Please welcome. The Stanley Club Band! This is our year. Oh, wow. Everyone, they're coming out with a sign that says, This is our year. Man in the front is holding on to the sword. That's Alex Alexander Shillak and Daisy. Alexander, the sword. Uh huh. Do you know what that sword represents? Anyone know? Well, that's the Claymore. They've taken that out every single home game that they've been at this year. That's a symbol of the team. This is exactly the same we see every game from them. So well disciplined, so well organised, and so, so motivated to be here. They are desperate to finish this off with a win to cap off this perfect season. Their quarterback, Louis Stevenson, gave a little little talk in one of the lo uh, local newspapers up there saying he's the best QB in Britain and that's what he believes going in this game. Absolutely. So we'll see on this stage what he can do. Yeah. You know, it's interesting as we talk about these two teams and try to analyze, you know, who's got the edge. You know, uh, Double Coverage came out with an article they called the Stoning Klansman's defensive line the best defensive line in the uh, university leagues. Uh, so, uh, it's going to be a clash of titans. Looking, you saw the Stoning Klansmen come out and just hit each other. One man across another man and just set their pads. That's what we're calling that about, setting your pads. But I think it's also making a statement. It's making a statement of who they are and what they are about. And the other team, the Birmingham Lions, they stand over points like they've been there before. So here we go. The traditional Sterling pregame chant. It's number 49, Chris Black in the middle, getting his team fired up one last time. Hey, you see the Lions, the Lions over this side just staring at them. You hear it. Man, there's no doubt, there's no doubt this Sterling team is fired up. It's no doubt that the poised nature of the Birmingham Lions, they are ready. I tell you everyone, as you're watching this, you need to call your friends up and tell them they need to watch. Tell them they need to call their friends to watch because this is going to be one of the best games you have seen in a long time, my friends. Mark my words. Absolutely, it's definitely worth tuning in. Tell your friends, families, anyone who's interested. Find the time, join us on Good Hour TV. Just shout out your window, call anyone who's in the street. Just say, get inside and watch Good Hour TV. <laughs> because you know what? I love it. So we see the coin toss. Captains come out. And we are just moments away here. It's the calm before the storm. Both teams are fired up now. They're just getting mentally focused on that first play. We said in the first game, it's all about setting the tone early on, and it couldn't be more true in a game like this. Well, you got two captains out there. Four captains, two teams, represent leadership. And again, special teams, what does the game start with a kickoff? Special teams could be key, and these two teams will have trained hard with the special teams. And it's Birmingham who are going to receive the kickoff first of all. Well, let's see what they can do. So Johnny Glover getting the ball. We saw what he did at the end of last year's championship game, leading two scoring drives. He'll want to start off in a similar fashion today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the Birmingham Lions will receive the kickoff. 
of Scotland. So there's a guy down on the sideline right now. I see is not suited up for the game, but has been an integral part of the development of this Sterling Klansman team, and that is Zaki. Uh, the Welsh anthem, the English anthem coming up again, and the Scottish anthem. We've got representations from all around the country here this weekend. Play some football national right. championship game. This is absolutely great, man. This is absolutely great. Oh. Especially for Sterling, their first appearance here since 2003. They'll be looking forward to this. You know, you talked about last year, you know, the score of uh, these two teams playing. You know, talk a little bit more about what that game was like and, and what you saw because I think that really builds what we see here the, the drama, right? The, the storyline, the um, the soap opera that is. Yes, uh, I think uh, you yes. were there on the day. Yeah, and it was could not be more different to this up in Sterling, howling blizzards. You couldn't even see the other sideline, but both teams, to their credit, stuck it out, kept fighting, kept fighting, and it came down to just one play within the last minute to give Birmingham the lead and ultimately the win. So it was so such an amazing game, and now we're back here again. But in a different setting, it's a neutral ground, it's beautiful weather, it's a year on from now, so a lot of people definitely have that game in their minds mm. about yes. what they're going to do to come back. The Sterling, Sterling uh, sideline will be thinking, we nearly got there last time, we need to do it this time. It'll be the same as the Birmingham mentality last year when they were playing Hertfordshire after losing the final of the year before. They came in and got that win, got the monkey off their back, and that's what this Sterling Clansman team will be wanting to do today. You know the great thing about that. I mean, you know, both these teams are coming in here to win. You know, but as I as I look at what the Sterling Clansmen have been able to accomplish, you know, and, and, and you look at who the top eight teams are, the perennial powerhouses that in any given year there's about eight teams that typically make it to the championship. You know, how how much pride must everyone in Scotland have that, that the Sterling Clansmen have reached out, that they are part of that elite group. Now, obviously, this game is about winning. This is about winning this championship. But it's just exciting to be able to say that. Sterling Klansman, you know, like the song says, started from the bottom now to here. Yeah, that's That'll right. Stefan Rowden and Sam Marshall back to return, it looks like. So here we go. It's the 2014 National Championship. Ashley Hopkinson will kick off. And we're underway. Number nine, Tunde Akindele. It's got down the sideline. Okay. Good tackle from the kicker there. That was number 25, Ashley Hopkinson getting across for the tackle. But they start at the 45. Great return. So it'll be Johnny Glover in the shotgun. Snap handoff up the middle. Andrew Hodge, Angus Hodgkiss there on the carry. But great defense there from the 
Klansman line. That's it. First appearance of the defense. It's Sterling and it's typical fashion, stopping them short. But just the first play, still a long, long way to go for them. Single coverage on the outsides here. Cover takes a snap, he's looking. Looking for the pass, throws it out wide. Good hand catch there. And it gets a few yards. That is Dominic Hayhurst, but there's a flag on the play. Beautiful catch by number 15 to come back to the ball. You know, it's, it's a disciplined thing for a receiver to understand. Once he makes his break, you know, there's a point where you need to come back to the ball and not just wait for it. Flag on the play against the Lions. So we're just waiting for the call here from the referees. It's going to go against Birmingham, but we'll find out exactly what the penalty is right now. So there we go, take it back. For anyone new to American football, the referee wearing the white cap is the head referee, so he'll be, he's the one that gives those signals for whatever the penalty was. Single coverage, press on this near side, so they can throw a deep ball over the top possibly here. Drops back. Looks left. That's a good throw and a good catch there. A nicely weighted throw over the middle. That is Tim Curry the with the reception. Nice catch, nice In catch. In it's similar to what we saw early on, the passes across the middle. Maybe that's another exploit that they've seen. Wayne Hill will have analysed the tape and know where to attack early on. As he goes into trips right now. You see a lot of spread from Birmingham. Glover drops back, hand off up the middle, but that defensive line gets it. was a fumble. fumble! The ball came loose at the end. Havel Omari is coming out, signalling it was their ball. Well, the referee is not quite sure themselves, they need to have a... Hevel Omari was the one that came out the, the huddle there, signaling they got the ball. There it is, defense making a statement early in the game. First turnover goes to the Clansman. You talk about that defensive line, you know that, that article that called them the best defensive line in university football, anchored by one of their defensive captains, Gareth McCall, number 60, the big man in the middle. This is one of the reasons why not a lot of people have scored on this particular defense is because they create turnovers and wreak havoc. As out comes Louis Stevenson. And it's in the spread. Now five wideouts. Isdale. Grant Isdale. A great running back. Great athlete. Deep ball down the middle. That's too much on that. But he was looking for Isdale. Isdale is a key playmaker for Sterling. Yes, he is. He is on all parts of the field. He plays defense. He returns punts and kicks as well. A lot of the touchdowns this year. So he is a key element, like you say. Bit of miscommunication between he and the quarterback. I think the quarterback expected him to keep that right up the seam. He began to go to the middle. So it'll be second and 10 from their own 46. Watch for that pass. And it's a pass to Isdale. Tackle there on the outside by Sam Gita. And that's something you've got to do when Grant Isdale's in space. You need to tackle him first man there. there you go. Number 22 stepped up with no fear. Put a hat on a hat. You can hear it all the way up here. Both of these teams, man, every time Grant Isdale gets the ball or someone on a Sterling Klansman team has the ball, every time the Birmingham hits you, you're going to hear it. But you see, the slot receivers have both got a lot of yardage to their cover there. And a fake handoff and hand up of the middle eventually. That's Matt Birmingham Barrington the on the carry. Matt Barrington trying to pick up the tough yards there. And the Birmingham Lions, those guys just swarmed him. Hit him hard in the middle. Now he drove it up a little bit, but I don't think it was enough. So it's fourth and inches early on. Fourth and inches looks like the offense is staying on the field here, so a bold call by the coaches. Wow, A lot of signaling from the sideline. Big play here. And above the middle, and that's a first down. Good. 
Nice call. Call for him by the coach there. He wants to show them he's not willing to back down in this game. That is a statement call, everyone. A statement call about what, what Robert Orr wants Wayne Hill and the Birmingham Lions to know about his team and what's to come. Elliot Walters there with a carry in. Up tempo offense here as well. Stevenson, easy throw to Isdale. Oh, he's not ready to tackle, but hey, that's what the Birmingham Lions do. They continue to pursue. See, this is one of the things that other teams couldn't do. That particular play you just saw, Grant Isdale, he breaks a tackle. Against other teams, he runs for a touchdown. Against the Birmingham Lions, they're continuing to come to get you. William Stone rushed the passer first, then he got out there. That just shows the athleticism of these guys. And Stevenson will drop back again in a spread. He's going to pass again. Looking deep, he's gone with a double move. Is Dale nearly got in behind? So that, one, that was basically the play that they were trying to execute beforehand. Is Dale released on the outside? It was a decent ball, but he wasn't able to pull it in. AJ Crab there with good coverage as well, covering his man. But it was a good throw and nearly got the catch there anyway. But you can see Birmingham aren't allowed to make substitutions here because the up tempo offense. Stevenson drops back, looking over the middle, floats a ball, what a catch, oh! it's out. So good. So oh, that was an incredible almost catch almost there. Almost, almost had it there. He finished it just enough to knock that ball loose. Oh, oh wow, that was Kenny McKay, former backup, backup quarterback and a great football player. He actually had the opportunity, he earned the right to play some football out in San Antonio, Texas been a part of this team for a long time a big leader fourth down they're going for it again fourth and six crucial player once more Stevenson puts Grant Isdale in motion hands it to Isdale going wide flag on the play he's trying to get the outside but they're over there and it is Sam Marshall the first man there but well, it's a flag on this side that was interesting on that play coach Orr just before a snap was screaming to the referee for a timeout I don't think they heard him but that's where the flag is, so let's see what the flag is called. But you saw something you didn't like there, tried to get the yeah. time out, but didn't quite get there. Well, you know what, Alan, that, that just shows how smart both of these coaches are and how well they know each other because Robert Orr must have recognized that whatever play he had called, they need to get out of that. And it was evident, by the way, that Birmingham Lions team swarmed the outside and was able to take Grant Isdale down. And the place down, as it looks like. All right. Hey, pass the Titans now. Pass the Titans. A turnover is a turnover. You know, at the end of the day, the Birmingham Lions do what they need to do in order to create a turnover. That means get the ball back. All right. The Stunning Clans will do what they need to do in the beginning. Get the ball. You know what? This is a, it's a two great teams going out. And you see where they got the ball inside opposing territory already after that penalty. Wow. Wow. What a huge turn of events. So, Johnny Club all go to work. In the spread, drops back, throws it out wide. Oh, I think that was a good move right there. The number 52 looked like he was right on that guy. Definitely. And, and I'd like to make a mention of the atmosphere. I mean, earlier on it was all fun. The first game, the tension is now up there. You can feel definitely, it. Definitely. And a noticeable difference between how the teams are, are holding themselves on and off the pitch. As here comes Johnny Glover again, trips left this time, hand up up the middle, and that defensive line is there again, Angus Hodgkins gets one yard maybe. Wow, so let me tell you something guys, what you just saw there was a tough Sterling defense stopping him, but what you also saw from number three is he continued his legs moving and was able to pick up another yard and a half in a situation where he should have been knocked back a yard. So, I mean, what, what everyone should be, we should be recognizing right here is that both of these teams, man, are tough and physical. They are indeed. Now it's third and nine for Johnny Glover. In the spread formation. He's dropping back, looks left, throw over the middle. Oh, that's a big hit. 
Big hit there by number 51. That Trying to go hit. back to that slant. Almost had it, but well covered by Omari there. Yeah, Hevel Omari. He's made two big plays. He's got fumble recovery early on, but he's hitting a play. You know, one great thing that I saw after that play is, you know, the Sterling Klansman guy put a little bit of a hit on the receiver and kind of gave him a pat on the head and kind of helped him up a little bit. Sportsmanship is very important. I'm sure it's something that the Bucks talk about a lot of, and you're witnessing it here with two teams that might not like each other and really want to win. And here comes the punt. This used to be Greg Freeman's role. So the punt, oh, it's over his head. Over his head, go get him. He's got time, he's got time, he's got time. Go get him. Yeah, the unfortunate thing about this is, Flag on the player, people downfield. Oh my god. He's gonna return it. Okay. And he's got chance to return. He's got away from one, but Stefan Rowden there, and there's flags all over the place. Oh, I wonder why. Stefan Rowden there with the captain on the seven. One thing to point out there though, for all the snap being bad, high snap, he had to run back and get it. Yeah. Did you notice how good the blocking was? Yes. Sterling guys couldn't get to him and he still managed to get a kick off. He even got a run up to kick it as well. And that, that, that just shows how well coached these teams are. No, I think, I think you guys hit it on the head. It was, it's a, you know, you never see that type of play take that long. There's somewhere in there, there's a lot of room for some mistakes, some errors some penalties and that's what we're seeing right here and the flag was on Sterling so it's a first down Birmingham moving forward so the punt is gone well that's 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 interesting, interesting. yeah yes, um, what what type of penalty would okay all right well it, it was something on the initial snap maybe Offsides? Oh, That's the only thing I can think well, of. Well, what they indicated was holding penalty. Against holding against the, the defense. Klansman. Holding against the Klansman there. That, that is a very interesting one on a punt return. Yeah, yeah. Nonetheless, it's first down on the Klansman 35 yard line. And this is where they have got to take advantage now. They've had a big boost there. They need to go and put a score on. Glover will drop back. He's running left. Option play. He's got someone on the outside, but well closed down there. And a fumble! Oh! Oh! oh. oh, oh the Birmingham yeah, Lions get it back. But that is Hodgkeys again. Who, that's a second fumble. So he's got he's got to be wary. But well recovered. You know, uh, I, I will say this, and, and I don't know if anyone at home noticed this, but the Sterling Clans, they ripped that ball out, which means they're being taught to stand them up and try to rip the ball out. And I'm sure that's what they've done this entire season. So the Lions get away with one there, they still have possession. So Glover will have trips left now. Looking left, cuts up inside. He's got a chance to get the side, he's got to run the, the sideline and he gets five yards. Ooh. And, okay. if, and that doesn't fall back too, he runs out of bounds. Yeah, I think, I think that's a smart move for Especially in this game. Yeah. I think I'll take that option too, yeah. 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 Both of these teams hit, and they hit hard. Okay. I saw a Sterling Klansman guy coming from like 20 yards away and I just I just cringe at a potential hit in the side. So I'm glad no one got hurt. Everyone's nice and safe. <laughs> and it's third and five for the Lions now. Trips right. Watch for that quick slant over the middle again. It looks open to here. Go back. No, he's throwing a bubble screen. And they're calling for holding, but he's got away. Mason Baptiste there with with the carry in the end reception. Nice pick up there. Good yardage for the Lions and that takes them even closer to the end zone. The Sterling sideline is not happy with that though. Great offensive recognition by the Birmingham Lions. Put the ball where it needed to be. Made a nice nifty move. Got it straight up the field. And now they're in the red zone. Just 18 yards to go to get that first score of this championship final. Into the spread now for Johnny Glover. Watching for the blitz up the middle here. Four man rushes to hand off to Hodgkiss. And great tackle there. Straight into the backfield was number 56. There's number 57, big guy. Well, big right. on that one. Good job, good job. Ossian well, Edwards well, Mewtwo. Yeah. We're seeing the power of that Sterling D line that you talked about earlier. They're getting in that backfield every play. The running game is non existent so far for Birmingham. Nah, you're right, you're right. It's Johnny Glover going to spread now. 
second and ten he's passing looking left his option to cover he's going to have to run he's got to throw it away and he does so great Good pressure there the for, because we saw number seven he drifted away from his defender in the corner so if he did have time to set his feet that looked really dangerous but great pressure up front to keep him running and ultimately get that ball relentless pass rush there from, from the, the clansman and he just didn't have the time to set as you say and get that ball away and he, he made the right decision getting out of bounds and stay for another day so third and ten now from the 18. We know Birmingham have a good, decent kicker as well. Yep. Glover drops back, looks right. He's gone deep. He's got man open. Oh, oh and three there. So there's a flag on the play. Uh, good football by both teams. Um, it was Dominic Hayhurst there who nearly got his hands on it, but there was three clansmen going in. And maybe it was a little bit too floated because there was tied the time there. And it's going to be a penalty on Birmingham. Well, it's going against Birmingham there. So the defenders timed it well, stayed off the receiver as he was trying to catch the ball. We'll just get the call in the seconds for the penalty. I've seen a decline from this side, so they're going to let him go fourth down. And, and if they want to kick the field goal, kick the field goal. So that's a pass interference call on Birmingham. So pushing off there too much. The offense is interesting. You rarely see the offensive pass interference, but you know what? That goes to the expertise of these referees. Uh, the British American Football Referees Association have really been grooming these referees in a great way. And you've seen it by how they're officiating this game and the game before. And it's field goal attempt coming up from Julian Morgan. Get some three points on the board early. Ball's down, Morgan kicks it, it's wide left. No good. So the first attempt at point misses wide left. It's still 0-0 here in the National Championship game. Tell us what you're thinking on Twitter. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Who are the big standout players for you right now? Tweet us at gridown underscore TV or even at Cecil Martin one <laughs> <laughs> at AP Gridiron TV. Stuart, do you have a Twitter? Uh, at Stu on Sports. At Stu on Sports. I gotta follow you, Stu, man. Yeah, yeah, you I do. I can't believe I'm not following you. I know, I know. You've been here for three hours and you're still not following us on Twitter. <laughs> oh, man. Back and forth like we thought this game would be, guys. A defensive battle, two defensive powerhouses. Louis Stevenson with trips right now in the shotgun. Hand off. Good tackle there. All right, yeah, yeah, good tackle. Number 23. Matt Barrington. The Matt Barrington. Now, see, Matt Barrington is considered a fullback, but he also gets in there at running back as well. And the interesting thing about, interesting thing about Matt Barrington, you know, he was scoring a touchdown for every three times he carried the ball, been injured the last couple of games. I think the Sterling fans are happy to have him back. As uh, so it's trips right now again for Louis Stevenson. Watching that bubble screen, and it is that bubble screen. Oh! It's backwards, is it? No, it's been given as incomplete, but that looked very, very close to going backwards, which they've got to be careful with. It looked very close to being backwards. I think the refs made the right call, uh, but at the end of the day, it would have been a tough call for them to make. So, interesting. And now it's third and eight. Defense is on top so far here in Leeds in the national championship game. Everyone, if you're watching this football game, you may be used to a lot of scoring, you may like a lot of scoring, but this is real hard-nosed football. Stay with us, because best believe both of these teams still got more to show you. This is football for the deepest, truest fans right here. In the spread, looking at pass, fakes a pass, looking deep now, and now he goes back to there you go. Barrington on the ball, it's a first down, and he's got to sign another flag on the play. My guess is holding. So that one's thrown from deep that in the defensive the backfield there. So as you look at this, as you look at that play just now, Dutch Stevenson, the quarterback for Sterling Klansman, he looked off of Matt Barrington and tried to find a receiver down the field. And when he did not find him, he went back to Matt Barrington. The great thing about Matt Barrington is he stayed with the route, which allowed him the width enough to catch the ball and be able to pick up some yards. Well, that, was penalty. that penalty is actually waved off, so no penalty in the end. Just down for the first down for the Klansman. Again, I, I just can't say how great, say enough how great these refs are doing here and making the right choices, taking time to collaborate with each other and make sure that they're making the right calls, doing a great job. And they're all volunteers as well. And they're all volunteers. Oh, I know that. Great point. 
as here goes Stevenson, hands it off to Isdale, who's got it. And that's a good tackle, good pursuit angles as well. Yeah, it really was. You know what, the Birmingham Lions, they know. They know what to expect. And this is a statement play for Robert Orr. When Grant Isdale played on an all-Europe select team, the team that I was, that I was helping and, and, and facilitating and put together, the first play against Canada, we ran that, and he took it 80 yards for a touchdown. So they've seen that play before. I think everybody in the world has seen that play before. <laughs> and Stevenson is back in the shotgun and spread now. Drops back, looking for the quick pass he does to Isdale. And that's a good three yard game. Okay, all right. Nice, nice and patient here. They've tried to go for the deep ones downfield, almost connected on a couple. Um, now they're just happy to tick it out, keep that drive going, try and tie out this defense because we, we keep going on about it, but defense is going to be humongous in this game. If they can tire those guys out, then they're going to start rolling over them later on in the game. I think that's a great point, great point. Stevenson back, Isdale in motion. It's fake to him, he's going to throw, he's going to throw. David's got a man wide open down the middle, and he's dropped it. Oh. That in and out of the hands. Black, uh, former president of the team, plays tight end now. He's played some other positions on the team. This is his last game as part of the team. Uh, word is that he, he had a tough go in the beginning of the season with catching the ball, but then the last couple of games we've been catching it very well. And so I think that that particular time just you know happened to get away from him. But. Uh, here we go, special teams. It's a, it's a well, national championship game nerves, just that first quarter, some of these catches might go down, and, and when they build confidence, it'll come for them. Stu, you know what, that's a great point, my man, as we, as we watch this punt go, um, we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Got a chance, AJ Crabb on the return, some good blocking there, good coverage, and there's an orange flag. Another flag, uh, orange flag, that's a great, great eye too. I saw a flag, I thought there was something weird and interesting about it, but... <laughs> So, so Stu, some, some of you just talked about those. It's really poignant for everyone at home to realize because we talked about it a little bit. And, and it's that, you know, Birmingham has been here before, so they have the experience. The Sterling Klansmen have never been here, and so they may have a little bit more jitters. And we may be seeing that happen a little bit with the drop of a couple of footballs and, and a couple of other mistakes. So uh, we'll, we'll see if they can get those jitters out of them, though. As Johnny Glover is back on the field and back in shotgun, looking at the pass, looks left, inside, good catch. He's got some room, he's got some blockers there. And he'll get eight yards. That is the number 82 there for the Lions. Tim Curry. Tim Curry. That was a great catch using his hands. Fear nothing coming through that middle, right? There's a whole lot of bodies in there. Hey, it was a great job. Especially against the Sterling linebackers. You don't want to go one-on-one -on -one when you can't see them. <laughs> Stu, I think you're right, my man. You are right on that one. As Johnny Glover has got trips left now. A lot of shotgun in this game. We'll see shotgun all day, most likely. And it's a bubble screen. To Stefan Rowden, he's got some room down the outside. Rowden, a flag on the plate. It's a first down in Sterling Township as it stands, but you know what those flags fly, you always think holding, don't you? Yeah, it was a really nicely weighted pass, led him perfectly in full stride. He had a couple of blocks on the edge, we'll wait and see whether or not they were okay, or whether a little bit too round the side, but... That's what we saw from Johnny Glover last year as well, he's got a lot of poise on his passes. He might not have the strongest arm in the world, but he gets the ball there and gets in the right position. And it is indeed oh, holding as well, so just too good a block on the corner there. Yeah. Negates <laughs> that throw, they're going to have to try again. I love how you put that. <laughs> too good a block on the corner. The corner, you couldn't be more positive than that. Uh, Stephen Reardon, uh, is that how you pronounce his name? How you pronounce Rowden. Rowden? Rowden, 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 he is the club president as well, so he's a leader on this team. Expect him to be making some more big plays. He made, he made some plays in the final last year, and, and he's still here, and he's going to make some plays today, no doubt about it. As Glover, he's going to spread again once more, he's looking deep, pass rush is coming, he's got to get rid of it, and he does so, but they're there to make the tackle on Hodgkiss. Big hit by number three, uh, also playing a little, playing a little linebacker as well, was that Angus? Yes, it was indeed. Angus Hodgkiss, I love that name. So it's going to be third and eight now. I don't know about you, but I love steak, man, and you know Angus. Uh, good steak beans. Get some steak. No, Angus. Good for football good. players. It's as getting well. towards dinner time, so if you gather long enough halftime, 
<laughs> head to the stores, get yourself a... Does yeah, anyone deliver seat. steak? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Angus beef, to be exact. And that's the end of the first quarter, it looks like, and it's nil-nil, scrappy affair so far, but teams just feeling each other out, just getting getting, a, yeah. so, getting used to the formations of the other team. That's a real uh, feel of a championship about it, really, like you said, testing each other out, finding the weaknesses, at some point this is going to explode. We've, we've seen the potential there for the big players downfield. They're coming. It's just about getting onto it. So, so it is Johnny Glover on third and eight. Third and eight for Johnny Glover as the second quarter gets underway. When the referee puts the ball down. Well, we're just waiting on the referee to do what he got to do. All righty, this party started. It's Glover. The coverage going back now. Glover's got a chance. He's looking left too far. Just led Stefan Brown in a bit too much, and it will be fourth down. So he punt, and we saw what happened on the last punt. The ball over the head. They've got to be careful because they're nearer their end zone now. Absolutely. And you can see there. You pointed out the defense dropping back trying to change the look that they're giving Glover just before a snap, trying to confuse his reads, hopefully cause him to make a mistake. Yeah, well, interestingly enough, though, it was, right, it was the right read for him. He just needed to deliver it, you know? So, I uh, look for them to come back to that play. As the punt is ready back, are uh, Kenneth McKay and Grant Isdale for the return. Gets the punt this time. And it's off the side of the foot. Alrighty. And it'll be out about the 45. All right, again, the, the great kicking display continues. <laughs> no, the great we, we've heard of the AFT camps. They're doing a great job coming up. Maybe we need to get some soccer Maybe we need to kick. We need to yeah. kick. Yeah. 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 I think, I think we may okay. have to put that together now. <laughs> the football development, I think, is going in a great direction in every other area, but kicking. Just get some kickers across to help us out. We've been working so hard on developing linebackers and running backs and quarterbacks. We see, we neglected the kickers. Go get some kickers That's in. they say, punters are people too. <laughs> so true. kickers. And it'll be Louis Stevenson. In motion this time is Cam McDonald. But the runners up the middle, that's a big hit. The Bergen Lions D-line showing they're just as tough. Big hit number 55 out of 56 right there. Lowers the boom of my man Matt Barrington. That is Greg Pearson with the tackle there. Greg Pearson, great nose for the ball. I mean, he just looks like a linebacker, doesn't he? Just short, stocky, big boy. What's his name again? Greg Pearson. Greg Pearson. As Louis Stevenson is back again in shotgun. Coming across is McDonald in motion. It's fake out of him. He's looking to throw it down the middle. He's got a chance. That is a good hit there AJ by AJ Crabb. Great timing from the safety there to disrupt that. It's incredibly small window to throw it in. It was on target. Just couldn't grab it. It was there to make. He hit him in the hands, as we said earlier. Callback can't do anything other than that, and he's got to apologise for hitting him right in the hands. Yeah, that was Sam Hitter, right? Yeah. Yeah, he did a great job. I tell you what, I'm, I'm really impressed with number 42, Sam. Playing some great football out here today. As Stevenson looks to the sideline, they've got a lot of audibles built into this offense. And it's a hand, it's a deep pass. Oh, and that's a great defense there. Oh, Another big play by the defensive backs. Joe Van Oosten. Van Oosten. He made some big plays in last year's final as well, and it's been a staple in their cornerback position. So that'll bring up fourth down. Now comes the Sterling punting unit once again. I have to tell you, Dutch Stevenson, the quarterback in that play, I think he threw a really good ball. He threw it the way it needed to be thrown in order for Craig Black to have a chance to get it. it was just an extra too, play, quick, too quick for the safety to get across, so it was good that the corner was there to still make a play. So everyone, what you're seeing, guys, is two great teams playing great football. You know, that was a good play by the quarterback. You know, good route by Craig Black, but that was great defense by the Birmingham Lions D. And the punt is away. That's a good Whoa, punt. That's what you want to see. Good punt. That's what I want to see. Oh, oh no, you're not supposed to do that. Oh, oh curling back. Oh, 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 just rushes. Wow. Inches oh, away. No, that was a huge play, nearly. Oh, oh, so just so you know, back home, if they had been able to get that ball before it went to the end zone, it would have been right there on the one-yard line. But instead, it goes to the 20-yard line. Wow, great kick. So close. 
It, it, this, is, this is such a different game from the first game. We saw drives going down the field in the first game for both the Titans and the Bears eventually. This one is defences on the play, and that's why it's nil-nil. Now there's only been the one field goal attempt. Dare I say that was too good a kick this time? <laughs> Dare you not! Dare you not say that was too good! He doesn't need to come to the kicking camp. And that's a handoff up the middle. Julian Morgan. Ooh, yeah, big number 60, the defensive captain for the Sterling Klansman. What's his name again? Gareth McCall. Gareth McCall. Gareth McCall. He looks a big unit in that middle of that defense. Big nose tackle you want on your defense. So a little story about him. I, I got a chance to see Sterling Klansman play the Pyros uh, up in Scotland back in the day, about two years ago. And Gareth, he could not get in his stance. He was a big man that commanded that middle without getting in his stance. He's been working on that. Now he's getting down in his stance. And they say he's even more dangerous now he's in his stance. As Glover has got two running backs to protect him now if he does choose to pass. That's a handoff. But they've come through that line again. He's got around the outside. Julian Morgan. A few stiff arms, but maybe he got his hand into that face cage. Yeah, in a face mask. Yeah, good call on us too. I tell you what, that was some impressive running by number four. Uh, he, I mean, he broke two tackles in the back, you know. That's Julian Morgan, but another Julian flag Morgan. came in after the play. Oh, yeah. yeah Julian so. Morgan, great. Third year player, uh, sports and exercise science major. Uh, you know, I want to remind everyone, these are student athletes here that go to colleges and universities in the UK. And, you know, hey, they're playing this game because they love to play this game. But they're also going to school to better themselves and be, becoming a professional in something else. So yeah. it's great work. So let's see what the referees say on here. There was two flags eventually, one after the play. Maybe someone said something at the end. Maybe. That's usually Maybe. what happens when it comes out a few seconds after. Somebody yeah. said something or somebody's done something. Yes, it was a face mask. 15 yards. Offsetting penalties, I do believe. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the, on the back end. And, and as soon as that comes after the play, that's an automatic first down. First down, absolutely. So it turns from a big player for them into a bad one. And there was a penalty on Birmingham as well, I think. I think there was yeah, it was a face cage. Oh, was it? It okay. was a face cage during the play. Ah, okay. So in his stiff arms, he got a little face mask in there. Yeah, he did. And it'll be first and ten now. Probably in the same place they were before. After the offs well, not offsetting penalties. And this is a scrap in the trenches. And the referees want to want to have a word with each other now. Maybe it's now is a good time to talk about our sponsors. Yeah. Well, while we talk about them real quick, I mean, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Let's talk about them a little bit. Yeah. So we've been working now. We've done this for a couple of years. Built up some great relationships with other people who actually want to promote American football and work with us to try and help us do that. Um, guys like uh, American Football UK have been very always proactive in the, in the, the uh, area as well as guys like New Orleans, American Football Development. These are all people that are really passionate about bringing the sport up and up and up. That's Johnny Glover in shotgun. Hand off there. And he's got some Moonis Hodgkeys. But some good tackling there. It looked like he'd broken through for a minute, but that Sterling Klansman line got there and got to the man. Yeah, number 55, inside linebacker for the Sterling Klansman. I mean, just really stepped up. But you know what, again, it's that D line has slowed him up enough. Who's number 55, my man? Alexander. Wind getting Little in the way here. Yeah. <laughs> Alexander Shilakadizi. Let's see here. Alexander Shilakadazi. There we go. You said it much better than I, I did. Mean, I, I mean, you know, if, if his parents are watching, I apologize. We're doing our best. Stefan Rowden takes a little screen, oh, but great, great coverage there. Uh, it's number 25 on the coverage. That's Ashley Hawkinson. That's Ashley a, Hawkinson. That's a great play by a defense there. Number 52 engaged in a block, but he held the guy, drove him back into the receiver. Totally cut his options out and then broke off and made a tackle. That was so, Joe Blay with the, the good, the good job play. Holding, doing his job, holding the corner, not letting him get outside. You, you can see the movement of the linebackers. They get from one side to the other, side to side linebackers, and they'll make plays across the field, which is hard to run those sweeps that work against some other teams. And it's trips right now for Johnny Glover. Drops back, slow to pass. Good pass. He's throwing deep. He's got a man. He's got Stefan Rowden. It's good catch by Stephen Rowden. That's a huge play. Big play. Big play on the cornerback, number 15. 
for the Sterling Klansman. That was a great ball. Great ball. As, as I said earlier, Johnny Glover, can, he doesn't great have the strongest of the world, but that poise, getting the ball where it needed to be, right on the money. Oh my God, it was just a beautiful touch. Beautiful touch on that. And number seven, Stefan Roden. Did I say it right? Rowden. Rowden. I'm going to get it right at some point. <laughs> Mr. Rowden. Mr. Rowden, I'm sorry. Johnny Glover there. Fakes that off to one way and gives it the other way. And he's got some room. Wow. Look Hodge keys. So that little bit of misdirection oh, could give you that one right second right? on the linebacker step the other way to get your block and push him out of the way. Hey, that was a great run by Angus Hodgkins. It didn't look like he picked up a lot of yards, but understand that most of these, most, both of these teams are used to playing on a 3G pitch, and yeah. this is grass down there, so the footing is different. They're wearing shoes they're not used to wearing, but they're definitely, definitely showing impressive cuts and ability to have vision. And this is drive has been building for the Lions. This is the first real big drive we've seen coming off that big pass to Stefan Rowden. And, and Johnny Glover will be in the spread. He's going to pass again. Looking left, he's got a man past the, the corner, but he throws it out of bounds. Which, it, which is the we'd rather throw it there than inside. Yeah, what's interesting is his reaction either tells me that he saw something that caused him to throw it out of bounds, or he just put too much mustard on that ball yeah. and didn't realize it. I don't know which one you guys think it was. Maybe just got a little bit too excited there and just put a bit too much on it. Saw the guy, had an opportunity to put it right on the sideline. And like you said, Stu, even though it's incomplete, it is now safer to err on the side of caution and a bit too much because it's going to avoid an interception. Van Oosten had his man beat, so that might be something to look at later on as he's back in the spread. Third and five, crucial play here. Looking to go, he's going to go with the option. Beats one, Johnny Glover gets away. Now he's optioned it, and that is a quality that play. Julian Morgan, but the flags in the middle. I will say that was a well executed play by the Birmingham Lions. I mean, we talked about poise earlier, and the quarterback displayed that, but then the presence of mind to holding. On Holy. the Lions. That is really unfortunate. And maybe that's why that hole was so big on that yeah. side. But there is something else I want everyone to recognize is that the running back from the Birmingham Lions, he ran fast. He ran hard to make sure he stayed in line with the quarterback, which allowed him to pitch the ball to him down the field, which is great recognition. Which is what you were talking about earlier in the first game that we had today. And now it's going to be third and 14. Watch them look for Van Oosten again, who was open last time down the sideline. Mm. As Glover drops back in the spread, he's looking deep. He's got Rowden deep. And just a bit wide again. As the oh, cameraman is nearly taken out. Now, I don't know about you, Stu, but I don't know if there was any pressure coming yeah. to why he threw that particular pass, but there was a guy wide open, his yeah. number four, okay, Julian Morgan. Uh, in the um, in the wide route, I, I, uh, it was it's an unfortunate when he didn't see him because he was yes. he was he was as wide open as you can be. Yeah. Um, but well, with the Sterling Klansman defense wide open, so we're just glad our guy down on the sideline is okay. He's got some good feet there, saved himself. And now they're going to punt here. They want to pin them with it inside the ten. Trying to pin them inside the ten here with a punt. Maybe not kicking it as far might work this time. As it's punted so. wide. Okay. And well, everyone at home, what you're seeing is you're seeing some good plays by both the Sterling Klansmen and the Birmingham Lions. And you're seeing some plays that doesn't look so good, but that's only because the other team is that good. You're seeing them go back and forth, back and forth. This is great football you're watching. Stay tuned. Exactly. I mean, if you look at the records, Sterling Klansmen are used to scoring 68 points a game. They're not going to get anywhere near that a day. They are. And you know what? The Birmingham Lions, they're used to dominating in the way in which they're able to put up at least, you know, a touchdown a, a, a quarter. I mean, I probably, they probably average about 35 uh, points a game as 30, well, don't 32. they? 32.7 points a game. Yeah. And they're in, they're in a much difficult, much uh, harder conference. They've got the likes of Loughborough in there as a handoff up the middle. is big hole there, but the linebackers and safeties yeah, coming in to fill the hole. All right, so what you're seeing, everyone, is, is as, as the Sterling player has dominated on the offense, Okay, the Birmingham Lions are stepping up and they are stopping much of the charge that the Sterling Klansmen are bringing. And I think the main reason because of what you just said. They play in a conference, in a league, where the teams are that much better. And we're seeing that. As Stevenson's back, sends the running back in motion, he throws a quick slant to Black. Oh, and that was nearly intercepted. Off Black, and that's another drop from Black. 
Yeah, that was a really quick throw, I just couldn't get to him right in time. Yeah, I, I tell you what, I, you know, as quick a throw as that was, I'm not sure if it was because Craig Black didn't get his head around quick enough, or if the quarterback could have just been a little bit more patient in order to allow the play to open up. Um, that, you know, the only person that knows that is, is, is the quarterback and, and Craig Black. And that's a timeout for Sterling, and you can see there's a little bit of frustration there. I think on the offense, a little bit of a stretch. Yeah. The players aren't sticking at the moment. Yeah. Well, this is Craig Black's last game. He's been a major leader on the team for a long time. He has been playing really good football, according to my sources, the last couple of weeks. Uh, even though he started off kind of rough, and so they probably want to get the ball in his hands. And they do know he's a playmaker, and they also want to, you know, end his final day in a good way. And so. That may be what we're seeing with the quarterback trying to get him back into a rhythm. Yeah. It's just got to forget about those drops because there'll be a time later on where he'll have a crucial pass. And it's just got, it's just got to get everything else in his mind and make that catch. And, and it might be on this drive, it might be the next play, it might be late in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that time will come. I think the other thing that I think Coach, you know, Coach Orr and everyone else can, can tell him is, you know, you can be poised because it doesn't look like the Birmingham Lions is, is providing a whole lot of pressure. Looks like the Sterling Klansman offensive line is is holding everyone at bay enough and they have those three or four seconds to see what he needs. As it's a pass again, looking deep, there's two over there, and that is pass interference. I thought that might have been well timed, but the, re the referees are closer than I am. Mm -hmm. A very good pass there, not too lofted, right on the money, but incomplete pass. Let's see how much contact there really was there. And the, un the unfortunate part about that, and I'll, and I'll I'll stop this point if they're getting ready to tell us what the penalty was. Okay, pass oh, the oh, it was. It was too good a pass defense. <laughs> well, I will say this, everyone. For everyone who was watching this, it's important to know that the Birmingham Lions played that excellent. The only problem is that they got in position and didn't turn to look for the ball. Yeah. And so there were two, three guys right around them. I mean, you had it covered. If they had only turned to look for the ball, then it wouldn't have been pass interference, and the Birmingham Lions were in great position to let that happen. That was a great point, and Stevenson is now in the shocker. They'll be looking to build on that penalty handoff up the middle to Barrington, and gang tackling there, but the hard work, moving his legs four yards, that's, that's all you really need from a run up the middle. It goes to show, and we're not talking about the Stone Plains with offensive line that much, we're not talking about it from the standpoint of protecting the quarterback and giving Huh? But right there, we just saw an example of those guys. They anchored that four yards. I think there's room to, for the Sterling Klansman to continue to work the middle a bit and then play action it over the top a little bit. I mean, at the end of the day, though, this, this Birmingham Lions defense is tough. All right, and they're going to let a whole lot come up in the middle. I know that for sure. Uh, Stevenson is in the spread now. Running back to his left. He's looking the sideline. Change. Audible. And you hear from the far sideline, check the run. Which is not anymore, so he's going to throw deep. And there we go. That's a nice. Craig Black gets his hands on the ball. Yes, that is nice. That is nice. And it was a difficult catch, too. I mean, he had to adjust and, and get over there. That's great. Crucial third down coming up. Third and three, it looks like. On so the I, want, I want everyone at home to notice something else. And I don't know if you can see, but there's three signal callers on the sideline sending in the play. That means two of them are dummy signals and one of them is the real signal. It's an interesting thing Robert Orr has, has added to his offense. Uh, there's a handoff up the middle again. Barrington's got some room to the outside. Barrington's got a real aim. He's got the outside. Barrington's on his way to the end zone. There's a flag on the play. Barrington is in. But that is two flags on the play. Well, we saw it before with the Lions. The guy turned the corner, but it was holding on the receiver. They threw it exactly that point. But what a great run. Great effort by the lineman and good vision for Barrington to stop, turn it back and get right round the corner. Great vision from the running back. And, and it, if it does get called back, it, it's going to be a huge play. But it shows what type of vision he has. And it will. It's coming back. It's coming back. Well. 
the unfortunate part is it's coming back, but I think that we can we can definitely help the viewers understand that the offensive line of which we were talking about earlier, giving the running game a chance, opened up that scene for Matt Barrington. We've also seen why Barrington, before the last few games when he was hurt, was scoring a touchdown every third time he touched the ball because he has explosive big play capabilities. But also, this defensive line for the Birmingham Lions, they're not easy to block, and that's probably where the holding came from. As it's trips right now, running back goes in motion to the right, he'll block right, throw a deep, that's a good pass that, just, maybe just behind the number two there. A little bit behind, but uh, McKay. I get the feeling that McKay would, would, would want that one back because he'd catch that nine out of ten times. Yep. I'm surprised we're not seeing more running at the moment from uh, Sterling because there's only six in the box and they look, the two linebackers look like they're playing coverage first as well, they're very deep. That's an interesting point, an interesting point. Maybe we look for Rob to come back with a, with, uh, with a big run here. Mm. And now they put five on the line, mm. sending an extra rusher at him now as the wide receiver from the left comes in motion, fake handoff and it's up the middle, uh, Barrington and they're there again, the Birmingham defensive line. Okay. All right. I tell you, everyone, I mean, you're, you're looking at some tough football here now. I mean, I think he picked up about three yards there. And, I, I mean, you know, he's not going to pick up much more when, when you have a Birmingham Lions defensive line like you have and those linebackers like you have. I mean, they punch, okay, and they feel. They come downhill. They play downhill football. And they've got great secondary to protect the back end. As Stevenson has got in the spread formation again. Waiting for the snap now. Sends his running back Barrington in motion to the right. He's looking for a pass. He's looking deep again. And it's just into the ground. So it's fourth down. Fourth down from the 43. Oh, still a lot of tempo in this game. You worry whether or not it might fizzle out or drain away of course too much on this guys uh, but I think they are so up for it I'm expecting to see this in the second half just as intense definitely I mean we've had a similar type of game last year it was, I believe it was 3-0 towards the end of the second quarter teams are still feeling each other out as uh, get ready for a punt return and, and it could come in the second half when they make those half time adjustments to where to attack it might be then as that punt is straight up in the air and it's gone back and he kicks out, that's an illegal kick, surely. And that could be more that, that could be more yardage for Birmingham there. And that could be a huge turnover. That is a big play there. You heard it all the way back up here at the back of the stadium. Just that prang that comes off the wrong part of the foot. He'll, he'll have known instantly when it came off his foot that it felt wrong and it was going to be a bad kick. And, and then he, he, he added to his mistake by kicking the ball again, which is an illegal kick, and that could give Birmingham another 10 yards, and they've started moving the ball on the last drive. So that's another mental error from them, and, and, it's, and Rob Ball will not be happy with that. Oh, no, Rob Ball will definitely not be happy with that. But I will say this, you know what, it goes to the great competency of these refs too, because as soon as he kicked it, you saw a few flags come, which means those guys are so in tune with the rules. Okay, those small rules that, you know, not always have to get called, but they were right on top of yeah. it. Great job by the refs today. And it pops Birmingham straight so into Klansman territory. So this is where the defensive line of Sterling need to make a name for themselves after after a poor play from the punter and get the pressure back on the Lions quarterback. As Glover will set up in the spread formation once more. He's look, swings right, looks deep, and finds Rowden, just throws behind him. It was there, he, had, he found his little window, but just threw it behind him. It was, a, it was set up as a, a option for him, as a high and low. He had a man sprinting deep through the seam there, so he was just waiting to see if he's break open, ran out of time, tried to get underneath, but with a little bit more time, that could have been a shot at the end zone. And it'll be second and 10 from the 46 now. As Glover has got trips left. Hand off up the middle, but that relentless pass rush is there from the left-hand side. Great play 
from number 55. 55, wow. That is Alexander. You, you said his surname better than I did. Alexander Shlikazi. Yeah, he did. I mean, I might have said it a little differently last time, but my man, hey, downhill football. That guy's plays tough, hard nosed downhill football. He dispatched of his offensive lineman and just got down behind the play, so there was no chance of a cutback either. Great play. And it's spread formation for Glover. Rowden coming in motion. It's played to Rowden. Hand off, and he's got some room down that side, but Klansman there and stop him at the line of scrimmage. Great play by Klansman, staying disciplined. You know, one of the things that we saw in the last game a couple of times with both of the defenses that they lost contained. And so both of these teams, like you said, are just playing such great di discipline. Rarely are you gonna are they gonna lose contain. Now what you can see because both of these teams have excellent speed is someone being able to get around that edge utilizing the speed, but it has to come within the scheme. And both of these teams have the scheme and it'll be up to the coaches to call the right plays and put them in that right situation. As Birmingham will look to pin them deep here on fourth down with a punt. Kenneth McKay and Andrew Steen are back to return this kick. All right, and the punt comes. He gives it a nice boot, little line drive kick. And he's bouncing oh. around. That's a, that's a good effort, good effort. Yeah, I think Kenny really wanted that one too. Another flag. Interestingly enough, you know, we talked about both of these organizations yeah. being disciplined teams. But I don't think what you're seeing is, is, is a lack of discipline, but just such hard play by both teams that, you know, the refs can't help but identify and maybe some football play some things, and that happens. It's, it's probably just guys that they don't want to, they don't want to let a big play happen for the other side, so they maybe hold on a little bit longer, and the referees see it, uh, and it gets flagged. Yeah, so it's not malicious or bad practice or bad habits, it's just the passion of the game. It's holding on Sterling, so the ball will go back even further. That's the second receiving punt uh, they've been holding for them. Now, I have to say that, you know, it's interesting. The, the level of the play in the UK and the level of officiating is, is, is going up at the same level, right? It's, it's, it's moving up. And they were seeing a proficiency in the, uh, the refs identifying the holding and, and, and maybe the blocking schemes and, and how they block still needs to take another step up. Even though you got two teams with really good discipline and really good practice habits, really good technique, you know, it still needs another jump up. Definitely, as, as we're inside two minutes now, two minute warning in the first half, it's still 0-0 zero, zero here wow, in the National Championship game. So fast game. already. As Stevenson. Birmingham have put another man on the line now to get some pass rush as Isdale comes in motion, it's a hand off to Isdale. Birmingham, you see the linebackers moving across in formation there. And they make the tackle on Isdale. Okay, now we're talking about contain, right? Nine out of ten times that these teams are playing offense against some other team, Grant Isdale gets around that edge. Grant Isdale has the kind of speed that normally, even if you keep contain, he's going to run around you. But not against such a great team like the Birmingham Lions. And I doubt that even the Birmingham Lions can do it against the Sterling Klansman. That is what you're seeing here is this, this quality of team. Um, a sportsman-like wow. behavior again by Sterling, so they're going back. Now, so and they like shake the hands now after the play. Everyone. Now, I, I want you guys to witness that. Anyone who's watching right now, they shook each other's hands. It may be a penalty of unsportsmanlike conduct. At the end of the day, it's up to the young men down there to settle things. And by them shaking hands like that, tells me that they did. But the penalty still has to be has to be put on them. But I think it's great that they shook each other's hands. Great example of the, sportsmanship. And the five-man rush. And, and it's just the quarterback in the backfield now. So someone's going to come in motion. There we go. And it's a fake out. He's looking to throw. He's got a deep pass on. And that's pass interference. Come on, you gotta look. You gotta look. Everyone watching here, the only thing wrong with that coverage is that 21 did not turn and look. That's the only thing you did wrong. That's AJ Crabb on the coverage there. And that's big because they're right back up against their end zone. So that's going to give Sterling room to breathe now. But that's also the quarterback's confidence in knowing that he can put the ball up there. He thinks that's going to happen. And he trusts his receiver is going to fight for it even if he does turn around. So it's either going to result in a big play or a big play. You know, so it really works out well for Sterling here. Yeah, so Sterling get out of there as well. And Birmingham have got to be disappointed with that. I mean, it, as you say, he was in great position. He was just looking the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. 
You know, that's a great point, Alan. And, 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 and Stu, you know, I think the other part of it is I think the quarterback has confidence that our, that, that the Sterling Klansman speed, okay, can match up with the Birmingham Lions speed. And if they put it up, he'll be able to run underneath it. The interesting thing is they might not be as as on top of that as he thinks. Because 21 was right there. Yeah. Right there the whole time. Stevenson. Turn around. Stevenson's in five wide. McDonald comes in motion. He fixed it out. He's looking again. But the rush is getting there. The rush is getting there. The rush has got there. Oh, and a big hit comes through. That is number 94, William Stone, with the initial contact. And a flag down in More the defensive flags. backfield there. It could be defensive holding. Let me tell you something, that was some William great, Stone great hard nose play. Hey, first time a quarterback's gotten sacked in this game, and all the pressure that's been put by both of these teams. I saw some great rushing by number 83 coming off the edge. If I'm not mistaken, that guy is 6'7", coming off the edge. He did a little shaking hands with a Sterling Klansman displaying some sportsmanship. Which guy ended up getting the sack? Did you see that, Stu? Yes. Because there was a few guys around there. It was William Stone who made initial contact, but defensive holding on the play downfield has is, is nullified that play. Mm, mm. i tell you what, that was a big hit put on my man on, um, on Dutch there at the end of the play. So momentum starting to swing back in favor of Sterling here on this drive. A couple of breaks, let's see if they can capitalize that and keep the ball moving. I tell you, you know, when you talk about momentum, I don't, I don't know what, the pendulum keeps going back and forth. <laughs> Every as, other series. As Stevenson looks back, he's looking to pass left. He does so, Isdale is there. Oh, and it's another go, drop catch go, from go, Grant Isdale. I think that was a, that was a, um, that was a situation of footing. I, I, I'll tell you that right now. Again, these guys are not used to playing on grass. I think that if they had been on a 3G or if they had been on turf like they're used to, then Grant might have been able to get back and get that. I mean, but look, everyone is on this circle. This is not to give an excuse. It's just to let everyone know that what they saw was more of a footing situation than a, a an ability situation. As it's second and 10 from their own 30, McDonald comes in motion. And it's a handoff up the middle to Barrington. Barrington's got some room, but that's a good closing tackle. And another flag on the play. There's a, been a lot of flags in this first half. And yeah, yeah. A lot of ill discipline. Uh, not not necessarily in the play, but after the play, the discipline seems to go. You know you're right. I mean, with the unsportsman likes, yeah. It's on Birmingham again. Yeah. Okay, did, did we see exactly what, what that call was? I didn't quite catch that there. Was that, was that defensive holding or what was that? I did not see either, mm. unfortunately. Get the wow. instant replay off. Hey, if you saw what that was now, tweet it out to us, okay? <laughs> We're in this together, Has everyone. Hashtag referee at home. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, hashtag referee at but home. If we're looking at this drive, it's gone 35 yards. They've moved the ball maybe three on the ground. That's it. The rest have been penalties. Oh, that's true. That's true. Good observation. As Dutch will be back in the spread. Fair kind of looking deep again. He's looking for Black. He throws it late. And that's great coverage. Oh, Joseph Hanif with the diving stop. Trying to force the ball in there, then he saw it, he checked off, stepped up, felt the pressure, and then tried to get it in there. Bit of a risky throw there. A very risky throw, but again, we talked about the quarterback having confidence in his receivers, right? And confidence in what he's seeing. But what else are we talking about? The Birmingham Lions are always around. Those guys are always around, and the good thing about there is they turned for the ball, right? They made the good play. Made a play on the ball there, and, and that's what we've been asking for for this whole half of Birmingham. As, as Dutch Stevenson will look again in the spread formation, running back to his left. Barrington in motion left, he's looking to throw him, but he goes deep now, and that's a chance. He turns around. Okay, let me tell you what the problem was there, everyone. 89 slowed down. He did not finish his route. That was a beautiful throw. That was a great throw. If 89 had continued his route, continued in his route, it would have dropped in his hands. Now, I'm not saying that, that, that the, the, the quarterback there, who's been all over the place, only, his, only, his only flaw is that he hasn't turned around a couple of times, wouldn't have been right on it, but you got to run through the route. You can't slow down. It's Sam Jeter on the far side covering at the defensive back position. Sam Jeter. Sam Jeter's playing some good football today now, I'll tell you. Stevenson again, trips right this time, looking left, now goes right. 
goes for Black just out yeah, of his reach. No, no, no. And, it, and it's just the it, it's the, it's these inches that we talk about. It's not necessarily on the field. It's through the air. And that pass was yeah. a few inches off being completed and moving the ball downfield as the punt team comes out. And that was the right look too. He found the right guy in the right situation. He's got to put it on. So he's picking the right targets. He just needs to execute now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the punt will go back. This is well, dangerous territory now because we're only within about probably a minute left in the half. You can't let Stefan Rowden have a chance to run one back. No, we don't want that. And obviously we always see some interesting things in the punt. So let's see what we'll get out of this situation. There's the punt. That is oh, a good punt. Okay. Straight to Stefan Rowden. He's going to take on the bounce and he's got a chance to run right. He's got some room if he gets the outside. And the orange flag is down on the play again. Oh, nice open field tackle. Yeah, the orange flag is out again. The orange flag is out again. I wonder what that's all about. Well, if you know what the orange flag is, let us know. Yes. Well, this is the, uh, it's Don't essentially where the referees are marking up. where the play finished. Starts, yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, yeah it starts, excuse me, not finished. So it's just a reference for them in case they've got to run downfield and follow it and something happens. Uh -huh. Aha. Okay. So it can be confusing on a sunny day. I've been caught a few times actually playing and seen that. As Glover is in spread now, looking for a pass, looking left. Man gets to him, that's good pressure. Gets the ball away and out of bounds. That's the best he could do there as he was in under big pressure there from the defensive end. I tell you what, that was a great play by whoever the offensive coordinator is over there with the Birmingham Lions. And it was great recognition by the quarterback because it was basically an out and up. And all he needs to see is if the D-back goes with the end, then the out and up should be open. And it was, he just overthrew him. He was under a lot of pressure. He was getting hit as he threw the ball. So not much on the quarterback there. Glover's back in spread again. Look at the throw. He's looking left again. Same pattern just about. And Rowden gets the reception. He's beats one. Beats two. No, he doesn't beat two as the tackle comes in there for number 32. That is Jack Rice. And that is a timeout for the Lions. So timeout here. Coming up in a half time, we'll be joined once again by... Derek McBride from American Football Development, ex-pro, like yourself Cecil, uh, we're going to speak to him, find out his thoughts on the game, ask him a few other questions as well, so if you have any thoughts on the game, any views or just any general opinions, tweet them to us now or Facebook them, we'll try and collate them all together, but guys, exciting here, not long left, something's going to break before half time, do you think? Do you think we're going to get a breakthrough on the scoreline? We're going to see a big play like the end of last game. We called it. We'll call it again. Big play. I like it. I like it, man. I like that call. Johnny Glover. It's third and about two. In the spread. Quick pass to Rowden. Big hit. He keeps his feet moving and nearly spins away. That is 32. Jack Rice again on the tackle. I tell you, Stefan Rudin is one tough football player. Now, he was hit hard as he caught that ball and continued his feet moving. Tough guy to take down. You need two or three to take down number seven now. Definitely. We've seen that a couple of times on the last few players. It takes a lot to stop him, and that helps other people get open as well because they'll send a couple of people to cover him, and then on the other side, you'll have one and one, and that, you can take that chance later on. You definitely notice that distinctive change in the in-stadium music here. Some interesting choices coming through in a second. <laughs> I, I, I think you're right, Alan. Trips right now. Rowden is in the middle of the trips. And he's looking that way. He's going to have to get away. He's got some room to outside. He's got a lot of room to run as well, but he throws it and gets the... Ooh. He had a lot of room to run there as well. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Number 15. Wow. He got hit really hard in the back. I hope it's not too bruised. Dominic Hayhurst, yeah, indeed. He's back in the huddle, so he's ready to go in the he's next ready play. Ready to go again. All right, all right. And it'll be second and ten. Yeah, Alan, I, I don't know if anything that's necessarily going to break. I mean, both these teams are just playing some really good football now. I mean, stingy, stingy. There's no play. There's been no big players available. It's all been dink and dunk so far as Glover drops back. And that's great pass rush. Oh, and he gets away. Good pursuit by Glover. He throws deep now. And just out of bounds, just out of the way of Hayhurst. But Glover getting away from the pressure, but good pressure again there from the outside. Oh, yeah, yeah. He knew it was there this time because he felt it. He had to break the tackle. So that put, you well, you know as a quarterback yourself, it puts that clock in your mind. You've got to get rid of that ball soon in case there's someone else behind there. 
So it'll be third and ten now. Glover again. On third down, you've got to go. You've got to look around his way first to see if there's anything there because he's been making plays all day. Glover in the spread, drops back, looking deep for Van Oosten. Van Oosten can't get his feet round, and it's just slightly out of bounds. So it'll be a punt time for the Lions. That is oh. indeed half time. Oh, that is half time. So they try to go for it deep, finish off the half, but they're overthrow it. So, so far, it's still 0 0 here. We are at deadlock in this national championship here from the John Charles Stadium in Leeds. We're going to see the teams go off in a second. They'll be back shortly and we'll be joined in a little while by our special guest. But, guys, let's take a minute to try and break this down for the fans just in case anyone's missed any part of this game. These two teams faced each other last year in the quarterfinal. They've both been dominant and I think we all called it entirely accurately when we said the defence is the key today and you know we've seen a lot, a lot of big defensive plays. Yeah the defences have been on top, uh, drives have been hard to come by, we've seen one big drive from Birmingham but the rest has been the defensive getting in, getting pressure, getting on the quarterback, stopping that running game and, and it's been difficult for the offences to create anything downfield. Well, I mean, the biggest thing for me is, you know, it's been penalties in this game, but it's been tough, hard-nosed play that I think both of these teams have been able to utilize to dominate their opponents. But in this particular game, because both of these teams are at the same level of dominance, that there, it's just a push, you know? They're not able to do as much as they've usually been able to do throughout the season and throughout the playoffs. So what's interesting is now it's going to come down to coaching, you know? It's also, it's going to come down to players stepping up and making plays. But how are they going to make adjustments in the second half in order to exploit what the other one is giving them? How will they take advantage of what the other side is giving? And, and best believe, both of these teams aren't giving a whole lot. There's not a whole lot of disadvantage you see in both of these teams. And so that's where I feel like the coaching is going to be really interesting in how it comes back off. Definitely. You need to be a really good coach to try and spot these tiny little gaps and weaknesses. And both teams have those type of coaches. So now is the difference where they get time to sit down and properly discuss it rather than just having a few minutes on the sideline to try and see what just happened there so this is the time where they can really put things into practice and really make a difference and then we'll see that right at the beginning of the second half but once again on the show we're joined by Derek McBride from American Football Development Derek thanks very much for joining us yeah, we had, great to be back. Good to see you again. we had the first game and that was exciting but this has been an incredible match so far hasn't it let me tell you what I really like about this if you're a football fan you understand the precision of the game both teams are really precise in their running play so this is a great game yeah we spoke about this actually as you're coming from uh, AFD really focusing on developing technique and talent in young athletes we've seen so much here uh, defensive and offensive so what makes this game and these two teams stand out versus the first two that we saw earlier on? I think um, CC would agree with me, attention to detail. You can see that some of these guys have paid attention to detail as far as their alignment, um, as far as how they, um, you know, their assignment, their technique, and, that, and that's very evident. Yeah. And one of the things I would say is, you know, the difference really is both of these teams have bigger, stronger, faster athletes. Now, both of these teams have a little bit more to pick from. Birmingham Lions have a roster of over 80 people, sure. if not more, right? And so their university, with the size of the university and also the development they have in the other leagues underneath this team, you know, allows them to develop better and, and pick and choose more athletic, bigger, stronger, and faster guys. What Robert Orr has been able to do at the Sterling Klansman is really recruit very well, identify talent all over the UK, and then get them to buy into the culture of what he's built at the Sterling Klansman. And he's got guys all the way from parts of Holland, parts uh, you know, parts of London, and then the Bristol area from all over. And so you can definitely see a difference in size, speed, quickness, and athleticism. Really, yeah, yeah, it's a lot easier to beat you if you have a bigger stick. You're right about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, and it puts a lot of trust in everyone that with a great coaching staff, they can bring in new guys, whether it's from school or from overseas, like you said, with recruitment, and um, they just know that they're going to get that great coaching there. And it's always important to do things like that, especially either with coaches or with ex-professionals like yourself who, who do things with, with coaching, especially with AFD. So um, 
how much of a difference do you see in athletes when they get an opportunity to work with someone who really knows the game well? Well, a lot of the guys that we run into and we have run into in the past, um, you know, they're blessed with, with talent. They may be bigger, stronger, faster, like Cecil was saying. But now when you look at these two teams, you're taking one more ratchet and you can clearly see that the coaches may be a little bit more experienced, uh, may understand the game a little bit better, um, and may understand their players a little bit better, the technique and that goes into that, the, the, the emotional side of the game that goes into that, and you can see that on the playing field. And that's just what we try to offer you know, at AFD, is just to offer another um, set of eyes, so to speak, as to help you coach better and help you understand your players a little bit better. Yeah, so that's really good. And we've had a lot of interaction with you guys earlier. We were giving away tickets to the camp earlier, and I think they jumped all over Twitter for that yeah. one. Um, we've had a lot of questions coming in as well, uh, both about the game and about you guys yourself. Um, how, uh, how, how much of our social media users are you guys, first of all? Are you Twitter addicts? Are you Facebook addicts? What's your, uh, what's your um, choice? Well, from the standpoint of, of like, you know, our show, Sky Sports NFL, yeah. and, and obviously our show here on Gridiron TV, we, we tweet a lot. Uh, the other thing that we add, I've added to, to my repertoire as it pertains to social media in this sense is Instagram as well. Yeah. So pictures, you know, can paint a, a, a thousand words there. And so, um, so I don't know if I would call myself an addict, but I definitely want as many ways as possible to connect with fans, connect with those who care about the growth of the game and, and just care about motivation and development and, and opportunity and, and being the best that you can be. And so uh, anytime that we can promote those types of things in young people, I think that we're doing, we're doing the right thing. And speaking of connection, um, I'm willing to give out free tickets, two free tickets to the first person who tweets at AFD Limited. So um, that, we'll throw that out there right now and, and send, hope we can get some... Um, send a tweet right now to at AFD Limited. Say hi to Derek and the rest of the team and you could be in with a chance of winning two tickets. When is the camp this year? The camp is next week. We're looking at the, um, the, the 4th and the 5th of April. Yep. Of April. Um, and that's Saturday and Sunday of the camp. So we're excited about it. Yeah, and whereabouts? What part of the country is it going to be in? Um, Canterbury, outside of Canterbury at um, Eshlam, um, the Eshlam um, Center. So we're excited about having it, um, just being excited about being here in the UK and bringing football here too. Yeah. So hopefully you guys, if you're tweeting out there, you'll get those tickets. You'll be able to come along at short notice. But what will they expect when they actually get there? What kind of things are they going to experience? And how do you, you know what we're going to do? Is some some really cool things, and Cecil will, will really understand this. We're going to put some of the players through some combine-like drills, okay. um, just to kind of at the beginning of the camp to show them um, some of the things that we do over in the U.S. Um, evaluate them at the beginning of the camp, and then at the end of the camp, do those same drills and see how far they've come. Evaluate them from there. Um, we'll also have some VIP functions where they can sit down and meet some of the players and talk to them and get their experience. So uh, we have a lot of things planned for the players and we're really excited about it. Yeah, so uh, if anyone is already got a ticket, in fact, tweet us or uh, let us know how excited you're going to be there. Um, I've know I've been uh, aware of different types of camps going on in the past and it's always great that people over here can have that opportunity because one thing we mentioned before is that because everyone comes from such a different background into football in the UK and because it's a smaller sport it's not always available to everyone so it'll be a different culture versus back in the US. Yeah you're right about that and, and even to, to take it one, one step further if you're unable to um, come to the camp we offer an online curriculum from our, from our coaches from our um, a lot of our coaches who have been through the game who know how to teach it so you may not be able to personally physically be at the camp but you will still be able to partake in our curriculum that we have online so we're, we're pretty excited about that as well yeah that's really important so we are just seeing the uh, the team's just about to get ready to warm up in the backgrounds we have got one half of football left for the university season here and it's been an incredible season we've seen a few notes Cecil on the teams especially uh, the ones taking part today but uh, it can only be a great sign that more and more people are attending these events, more people are watching right now, and the sport ultimately grows. Yeah, and I think the other big thing is, you know, as, as we talk about these two teams, the Birmingham Lions and the Sterling Clans, and, the, and what they've been able to do, as more teams begin to emerge and more teams begin to create their own culture and have success, that'll allow more opportunities for more to play the game at a university level. It's not all about if you're talented, you go to the United States to go to a college or a university. It's, it's not all about, well, I've never played the game before, so why should I ever play now? It's all about providing as much of an opportunity for young people to play the game, get better at playing the game, 
And you know, this is a big part of it, getting education at the same time. Because development of young people and maximizing their life potential is connected to education and the experience that playing this game with football provides you and learning some intangibles that will help you grow, well, that, that's just a great part as well. Yeah, I, I couldn't I couldn't agree anymore. And you know what? What's great about the, the game is when you start out the game at three or four. If you have a ball and a couple of guys, you got a football game. I mean, and right now you see you got a ball and a couple of guys, and we got a great football game. You know, that's that's pretty much what what you need. I mean, whether you can be big or small, skinny, short or tall, I mean, you can be included in this game. So I mean, that's what makes the game so game. Yeah, and what we're really seeing as well with the growth of the NFL, and with this year being such a key year with so many games coming over to to Wembley, that we're getting all these fans of the NFL who are maybe originally fans of the Super Bowl or have a passing interest in the sport now being converted into guys that are appearing in the stands here, appearing in the teams and the staff of uh, teams all across the country. So it's that conversion factor that they're not just watching football, they're taking part as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let me send a shout out to all the ladies out there that are playing football. All right, American football is emerging over on the ladies' side. I've seen it. I know you guys are out there playing, so congratulations. Keep it up. And hey, if, if, if you love playing football, it don't matter what you are, boy or girl, give it a go. Definitely. So we are just waiting now. Not long left to go for the second half. Sterling Klansman still inside. They, are, they were very mysterious in the first half. They went off to trade on their own. They are waiting till the last minute, I think, to come out here in the second half. Um, um, I hope, I hope, I hope in that strategy in the beginning, I think it was good. I hope that right now, as, as they're figuring out what their game plan is, that they get out here and get warmed up. Because while it is a beautiful football weather day out here, you don't want to come out here stiff and you don't want to come out here and not be able to perform right away at your top. Because you can already see that this is a game of inches in general, but this is a game of inches in this particular game more importantly. And it may come down to just one score. It may come down to just one kick. Now, it hasn't been that impressive of some kicks mm -hmm. of yet, but at the end of the day, what it looks like is this going to come down to a very small, minute situation, and, and, and it's going to come down to maybe a few points and who wins this game. Yeah, so let me ask you this. You're both ex-professionals. You've obviously dealt with it at the highest level. How do you deal with the mental pressure side of football in this situation? If you're here halfway through national championship, it could come down to one play, like you said. How do you deal with that as a coach talking to your players right now? Mm, well, I think that there's, there's definitely enough mistakes that, you know, the coaches can preach to their kids that they've had. But there's enough good things that they've both done that the coaches can preach to. And so the biggest thing that they have to do is just, you know, help each one of them buy into. And if you're asking, like, how I'm going to deal with the mental, well, you know, I got to buy into it myself. As a leader, I got to help the guy next to me buy into it. And what I'm buying, what I need to buy into, what the coach need to help them buy into, is that they're good enough to win this game. That everything that they've done to get here is all that they need in order to end this game as the winner. And now they need to pick it up. They need to pick it up because both these teams have gotten better throughout the year. They've dominated throughout the year. They ain't, they ain't dominating each other up in here. So they have to buy into, they're supposed to be here, you're supposed to win. And if you do what you've done to get here, then you'll win. Because what they've done in the first half, both these teams, is not what got them here. It's not what got them here. And that's a great point you mentioned. This is the discipline of the game. I mean, this game is a, a discipline game. It's a team game, but it still is a one-on-one. -on -one. You have to win your one-on-one -on -one matchups. Um, and it can, the game can be decided on one play. Is that going to be the first play of the half, or is that going to be the last play of the second half? Yeah. So we have no idea that what play that is. You play one play at a time, and um, but but it get figured out somehow sooner or later. Mm, I think I think what you just said was a, was the biggest point. That was, was a great point. One on one matchups. You know, I and mean, when you sit in that locker room, you know you got five, six, seven different coaches. You know what I mean? And so what you just got from us was two two opinions on how we handle the pressures. But what he just talked about is one-on-one -on -one battles. I mean, I think that's a big one. Yeah, buying into something, that's one thing. But, you know, if you can get these kids to buy into the fact that every one of you guys are having individual battles, and you must focus on winning that individual battle. Exactly. I think that's a poignant one. That's yes. a poignant you, one. You, yeah, individual. You, you can have your own footprint, so to speak, or fingerprint on the game. You, your individual, you can have individual impact as far as it relates to the team and the game. And that's what makes this... This game's so great, man. Individual impact within a team yeah. concept. Love it. Team Love yeah, it. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. That's really good points there, actually. Really well raised. And something we've seen in abundance with both teams now. We've got a, a brilliant core of veteran players 
who works, know the coaches so well and back and forth that they know how to make that individual impact but still work together as a team. So we are uh, really, I'm really, really looking forward to this. Um, there's just still so much in this game. I think we've, we've got a lot more to see. Yeah, and, and it's going to be exciting. I mean, we, I can't wait to see how the teams come out and how they approach the second half um, and just come out and, and, and play ball. It's, it's come, coming down to playing ball. Fantastic. Well, thanks very much for joining us again, Derek. Thank you for just having me. Some, I'm glad to be here. Some more details on the, the camp in case anyone missed it. So um, where, when, how to find out more information. Well, if you want to find out, all you need to do is go to afdlimited.com. And that'll tell you all you need to know. Um, there's so many things that I could talk about with the camp. I'd be here all the second half, but yeah. um, but if, if you go to afdlimited.com, you have all the information. We're still looking for people to sign up. And like I said, right now, if I get a tweet right now, um, I'll give you two, two free sign-ups to, to come on in. Fantastic. Well, we're going to check those tweets just now. We're going to try and see if we can cut back to the pitch uh, any moment now so we can actually see the Lions training. Um, they're covering the field here. Sterling are on the way out. So stay tuned, only a few minutes left till the second half of this national championship game. It's the Klansmen versus the Lions. Thank you. Good stuff, brother. Good stuff. Boom. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. I mean, okay. I hope so we're wrong. Lions going to back out on the field, warming up together. And that's the Lions on the far sideline. Finish their warm up. Just in a little huddle there. So not far to go now. Referee is calling the teams out. So we are about to kick off for the second half. Just one half of football left in the university season, and, and, and it's a big one for both these teams going for that national championship game, going for that title. as Klansmen will get the ball first in the second half. All right, everybody, hope you've had a good halftime and you're back here with us live on Good Aaron TV. 
It's football time again. Lions kicking off. If you missed anything in the first half, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Everything is still to play for in the second half. Let's see if they've got they've been to the kicking camp for this kickoff. Yep, here we go. Second half, baby! Let's get this party started! Let's get ready to rumble! It's a heavyweight fight, everyone. As we're joined by some Birmingham Lions up here. Deep kick, and here comes the return. Oh, he's got it! Deep here! Stefan Knowles with a tackle What's there. What's his name? Stefan Knowles. Stefan Knowles put the bang on him. And Stevenson will go out to lead the offence. First up, looking to get an early score on the board, get that scoreboard off the zeros. So please to the So here come the Klansmen on offence. Starting just outside their own 30 yard line. Stevenson looking across, he's in the shotgun, spread formation, running back to his left. Barrington in motion, he's going to throw a right, gets an easy pass across to Craig Black, who is pushing for that first down and he's just about got there. Good yards after the catch there, converts, or he's actually being Just called short. slightly short there, it looked like he fell past the first down marker, nonetheless still fighting for more yards after that initial catch. And the up-tempo offence here from Sterling, straight back to the line, as Birmingham put another man on the line to rush the passer. Hand off to Barrington, and look at that Birmingham Lion pursuit there. Loss of two. Great number 56 back there in the backfield again. It is indeed, that's Greg Pearson. Greg Pearson, and he had the defense of band number 94, did a great job also. Wow. Early third down, then three for the Klansman offense. That loss was about one the Now you see the offensive line, everyone looking over to the sideline of what the play is. Looking left, he's got a throw, he's got his deal open, and that's a good round of tackle there, but he's got a five more yards yeah, to pick up the contact. First down for the Klansman. And the uh, uh, Sterling Klansman have come into a little bit of a rhythm. What you're seeing is the offensive line looking to the sideline to the play call. Straight uh, back to the line as well. Up tempo. He's got to get something going, and they've started this drive well, started this half well, have the Klansman. Stevenson in the spread again, looking through and right, looks like Lugui's going deep, and that's good coverage by, by Van Oosten out there. That was great coverage. Van Oosten on the coverage. There may have been room to throw it up in the air to give it a little bit of air to see if number seven could go under it, but he was right foot for foot with him. I mean, I, I didn't see anything that told me he was going to run past him. Speaking of this, number seven, Cam McDonald's, it's his birthday today, the Klansman number seven. Yeah. Uh, well, happy birthday to you there, Mr. McDonald, and to his entire family watching the show. He wouldn't want anything more than a touchdown for his birthday present, would he? I, 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 I think uh, his whole community would love to see that. Hmm. Uh, Stevenson in the spread, dropping back, looking left, it's a quick pass to the left, and that's a good catch there. So we just saw the first instance of the Birmingham, or yeah, the Birmingham Lions providing a little bit of a blitz pressure up the middle. And we've seen since coming out, it's been pass, pass, pass. They've obviously that's the adjustment they've made. They've got something in the coverage, and they want to exploit that early before yeah. Wayne Hill gets a chance to. Put, the ball 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 it's a few times they've caught it and then dragged defenders with them past the first down marker or right up close to it like that. So they're fighting for more yards. As they're checking. Oh, this is third and in inches right now. You see the whole offensive line. Everyone's looking to the sideline for what the play is. Yeah, got three guys with the signals. One is the right one, two are done. Twins right now. Tight end 
is on the line. It's going to be run up the middle to Barrington. And he's got the first down, it looks like. Well, we first down, no first down, first down. You know, the great thing about that run, Matt Barrington, he got that run, he's kind of a flat back. He stayed in the hole and didn't move his feet. He found a soft spot and picked up the first down. A great job. And this has been a great first drive. Great first drive so far by the Klansmen in this second half. We, we talked about it off air that uh, Birmingham were on the field all of the break just about and they were getting their reps in and Sterling came out did some stretches we thought maybe Sterling would be a bit slow but they've come out and they, they obviously yeah, know what they're doing they come out nice and warm <laughs> so, so the spread has been working for them some quick passes it's now going to be second and eight at the 35 yard line of the Lions for the Klansmen And the check again with the line. The three signal callers right in front of us now. Stevenson gets a snap. He's looking left. He's looking left. He gets a quick pass out to Barrington. He's got some room down the sideline. Great open field tackle there. Take the legs so he can't go anywhere. Number 21, like you said, great open field tackle. You know, it looks like the Stunning Klansmen are just taking what they'll give them. And what the Birmingham Lions are doing is they're bending but not breaking. I am not going to let you get behind me. If you catch it in front of me, that's okay. I'm going to tackle you. They haven't, they haven't let anyone get away from them. And what they've done is they've just made those plays. But, wow, good job by the Sterling Klansmen. And it's here in spread formation again, Stevenson to the sideline, they all look again. And Stevenson will take the ball in the spread. And back to his right, drops back, he's going to throw quickly to his left. And that's through the hands, straight on the hands, as he said earlier. He, he should he should apologise to the quarterback for hitting him in the hands. Quarterback should say what? Start hitting the hands there. with the football. Nice and patient going down the field. Bit by I'll bit, just five, six yards here. But it's fourth down now, so, so this is a crucial play. play. They're going to go for it rather than down. attempt a long field goal for you, which is probably the right decision because I don't know whether anyone can kick that far right, in the British right. game. I tell you what, though, the Birmingham Lions defense have played it very well. Ben, but don't break. And the Sterling Clans will need to bring that last play in. And this will be crucial. I wonder right up the middle if that is what it's they're gonna, about. It's going to be a pass. He's looking left. It's one on one on the outside. And he's got it! He's in! Oh, 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 what a goal! His goal goes up! Pulls the ball down with his hand! Great coverage by the D-back! Great wow. coverage by the D-back! But not great enough because the catch was too great for the coverage. That is an unbelievable throw from Stevenson. Stevenson obviously seen someone in the crowd had a go and he came over and had a word with the sideline, like, with That's the fans down here. He talked a lot of talk early on in the week saying he was the best, but it's throws like that that justify what he said right there. Unbelievable. You guys hit it on the head also. That was as beautiful a throw as you can get it. I can't, I can't do any better than that. I can't put it in your hand any better than that, Big Stu. And as we said, they've come out and made adjustments, gone down the field on the pass. And it's a big complete, so it's 6-0. Wow, so we missed the extra point, but we get the first points of the game. It's 6-0 for the Clansville after a stunning throw to Isdale. And we I just, have points. just can't talk about that throw that much. The, pot, the position he put that ball in, it, it, he couldn't loop it either because the defensive back would have got under it. It was perfect. And trajectory to get it on behind the defense because it was good coverage as you say coming back to what we said earlier is having the faith in his receiver to go and fight for that ball so it could be looking for a pi penalty it was up against the sideline so again if he misses it could go out of bounds it's safe but he fought for that ball and he stole it off the defensive backs and you know what the craziest part of that was not only did he jump up and get the ball but he came down and had the balance and athleticism and presence of mind to stay inbound and score the touchdown. Beautiful. Beautiful. Right down the sideline. You can't you can't draw it up any better than that. And it's it's a touchdown worthy of a national championship game. Mm, I'll tell you what though, these Birmingham Lions now, look, they just got hit. They just got hit hard. You know, they stumbled a little bit. 
But best believe the Birmingham Lions are getting ready to step back up. They're getting ready to give a punch back. They're getting ready to hit back. Hey, and that's, hey that's the only way Sterling Klansman want it. And Rowland's trying Ooh, to get away. He wow. nearly got away a few times. Number seven is so strong, so hard to take down. Wow, I'll tell you what. Both of these teams are just going at it. And they won. As uh, the Lions look, getting ready to go downfield. Now, as the Birmingham Lions defense display, then but don't break. Let's see what their offense will come with and how the Sterling Klansman defense, defense will respond. Oh, and almost a perfect throw right in there. Safety comes over, breaks it up, but we have a flag down in the line of scrimmage. But a nice confident start to the drive, looking to thread that ball in there. Yeah, you're not lying. You know, it's interesting. We haven't seen a flag in a little while, so <laughs> that's, a, that's a positive one. I will say this though, Alan, I mean, as I looked at that play right there, they didn't try to take a big shot. They tried to take one about 20 yards down the field. But just like the Birmingham Lions defense, the Sterling Klansman defense was all over it. So it means that you got to make plays. You got to make plays with people on you. Yeah. Uh, five yard penalty against Sterling there. And now he's run up the middle, but that is wrapped up by McCall in the middle for a gain of one yard. She'll bring up second down and four. But Gareth McCall, lugging on the inside, getting love from his other D linemen. Capping on the defense. So second down and four. Goes to the air. And a nice grab. Turns the corner. Beautiful catch. But Kevin turns it up, picks up some yards. Hey, that's a bad injury. An injury to the Lions. And, and let's talk about that first Sterling drive. We, we talked about how they might be a bit cold coming out because they came out of the locker room, did a few stretches, but they knew what they were doing and they went down the field, made the adjustments from the first half and, and got their score. Hey, no, they really did. It. And what was really interesting is the Birmingham Lions defense, Ben but don't break attitude, you know, caused cause the Stunning Klansman to miss a ball that put him in a fourth down. And what does the Stunning Klansman do? They come back with a bomb, with a big play. Gutsy. Great play call as Johnny Glover is in spread now. It's a handoff. But that is great tackling there. Oh, and you can hear the sideline in front of us is up, up about them now. He goes number 50 getting in the backfield and making a big play. Austin Jacks. Austin Jacks. That's the way, That's the way to do it. Fight through your block. Keep your eyes in the backfield. So we hear defensive coaches talk about it all the time. Engage the block, but keep your eyes in the backfield. See what's going on. And then he still made the play. So it's second and long now. Spread formation again. Press coverage from all cornerbacks now. There's a chance to get in behind, possibly. Throw. Good hands by Van Oosten. Usually a defensive back, but they've got him out there now. Get your playmakers on the field. I think that was number 82 right there. Nice catch. Nice throw by the quarterback. Johnny Glover. Is that Johnny Glover? Yes, Johnny Glover. Johnny Glover. I like his. You know what? He's a, he's a good quarterback now. He's got nice hands. I mean, he's got nice vision. He's, he's got nice poise as well. All his yes. throws are, are, are pinpoint just about. And again, press coverage. That's something they've obviously done this half. And he's going to run left. There's a flag on the player, probably holding on the far side. But Glover's going to run it and get the first down. And goes down. There's a hit after the play. And there comes another flag. Alright, that's a good point. It's going to be a tough one because his sliding was on his knees. And I, I, I've never seen sliding. Yeah, that's, that's a good that's point. It's, it's sliding on the knees, but in this level, if you if you need to touch the ground, that's down. So that could be the thing. So it could potentially be a late hit call here. But we do have another flag down at line of scrimmage before that. So we'll just see the call coming up just now. We've got off day. Defense, that penalty's declined. After the play, it's got personal foul, against defense. 15 yards, first down. And that's a big first down from Birmingham. Two penalties on the cramps from there. Originally it was an offside. Now it's declined to a personal foul penalty after the play. 
So Birmingham have got the ball inside the 30 now of the Klansmen. And that's a big game for Birmingham. They've already made the first yard yard, but this one's a lot further down. As Johnny Glover is back in the spread formation, running back to his left now. The press coverage on the outside by the corners. And it looks like another pass he throws. Looking for Rowden. He found Rowden, but that's a oh, big, big yeah. from number 25. That is Ashley Hopkinson, but there's a flag on the play down the left. It was a good throw. That was a good poised throw again from Glover. But it's a penalty on the Lions, and it'll go back. Hopkinson that made a big hit. And then we'll then view number seven, penalty declined, second round. Penalty declined. And then there's more downfield seven, on right? number seven, so that was an interesting formation, must have been if it's if it's Stefan Rowden who's been given ineligible downfield. We can do with the lineups whether or not he's been covered up by another receiver. Uh, I didn't actually get a chance to look at where he was lined up, but nonetheless, still counts. So Clover has now got twins left and two running backs in the backfield. Clover drops back. Screen pass to Rowden. Rowden's got some room up the middle. They close in on him and they get there. That is the number 46 on the tackle. That is Kyle Zahariev. Wow. Wayne Hill just dug into his his back pocket with a middle screen to his captain, to his, to his president. Nice play, nice execution, I, I must say. That's a good adjustment as well. They've seen that, they've seen the good pass rush. Get the screens out there, they'll slow the pass rush and, and give you big plays. A false start here by number 32. Tom Curry, now setting off to Irwin on the Birmingham Lions. That is Jose oh, Anderson again. Five yards, start, open, five yards, don't stop there. So that's third and ten for them coming up now. And that's going to be infuriating coaches. So it'll be third and ten from the 29. Third and ten for Birmingham. Trips left for Johnny Glover. He's gone on the option, cuts Quite inside, option. gets the option away. That was a risky ploy, but he gets the ball away. And it's a first one. It's what power there for the running back. Julian Morgan gets the first down when he should have been tackled for the game. Good power running here, good positioning of the running back that we mentioned before. Staying behind and with the quarterback, so he's still ready for that pitch. Even after he got hit initially, handed the pitch the ball off. And yeah, great running. It was a very loopy pitch as well. It went up in the air for some time. And they're in the red zone now at the 16 yard line going in are the Lions, led by Johnny Glover. He drops back. Looking for a pass right, he's going to run right, he's got plenty of room there. He's going to the inside line and he's got a you know, gain of nine, Johnny Glover. Well, again, I'm getting excited there. over here. To the outside, to There's the an nine injury nine there line. for number yeah, 55. Yeah. For Alexander Shilakadze. Good job, big guy, good job with the name. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. We do the best we can, <laughs> don't we? We do, we do. Heavyweight bout. We talked about the first half, it was very hard to sustain drives. Klansman come out with a drive. Lions come and reply. And that, that, that missed extra point that was missed is looking huge right about now as Glover is in the spread. Hand off up the middle to Julian Morgan. Gets a cut ball, it'll be third and short. Morgan again on the carry. Wow. Of the line, but managed to keep the ball momentum. And here come the big guys for the Klansman in the red zone. You know, it's important for everyone to know who's watching this. It's hard work to win a championship in anything. When people go their whole lives without ever playing a championship game or even being in a position to become number one in something. This is exciting. So That's Glover. is in the spread once more. Comes back. There's a flag on the play. It looked like an offside, so it's a free play. Was that pushing the field? Yeah, no. It was in. Not catchable, but it looked like an offside from the far sideline. The the there's two flags. There's three flags on the the play. Yeah. 
One was looked offside. Well, 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 and it's third down and one, so if it's any penalty against the Klansman, it's going to convert into a first and goal here. First and goal inside the five as well. I've got off day, defense, that penalty is declined. I've got hold day, defense, that penalty is declined. That personal foul, we're up in the back now. We have the distance to goal line, automatic first down. So all three penalties on the Lions, that, that is not what you want in your own red zone and it's given the Lions a great chance to reply immediately. You really, really need to maintain the composure here, don't give away any penalties, just play tough football like they did in the first half and just grind this drive to halt right now before Birmingham can get a score. That was a great job by Green Hill knowing that it was the third penalty of erupting the passer was the one that was going to give him the most yards and put him in the best situation the others would not have. Johnny Glover in spread formation now. He's going to run it. He's got the option. Option's in to Morgan and Morgan's in surely. Yeah, Morgan gets the first down. Oh, oh, great play by the Birmingham Lions. Great play call by... Wayne Hill and his staff. I just saw a little clap of the hand between the four, number 45, number 55 defense in the Sterling Klansman and the quarterback. Great sportsmanship out there. Yeah. I think he got a big hit on the quarterback after the play, but hey, he fixed it away oh, and made the right decision. Yeah, option play, the quarterback's there for hitting. That's why I never win the option. <laughs> I just love the sportsmanship by those two, yes. you know? Tough, hard nosed football, you know? But nothing wrong with giving a hand. Joe Morgan got the touchdown and now he's going to try and kick the extra point to give them a one point lead. Snap is low, he can't get there. Glover's going to have to run. Glover's got a chance to get the end zone, is he going to get there? Glover gets in for the two points. What a play by Johnny Glover. That might be the most athletic holder ever. Okay. Really good recovery there. Ball with the snap, but kept his head up. Look for the pass option then to go off himself. Wow, and that was not designed. I mean, that was basically, you run that, you install that as, as a kicking unit just in case. And they ran it to perfection. Great job. And what do we say in the first half? Stay with us. It's going to get interesting with points on the board. First two drives. Oh, that's what we told you. Oh, no. If you ain't oh, doing before, you better call your friends. Tell them to watch Gridiron TV right now. Tell your friends to call their friends to watch Gridiron TV because the Sterling Klansman and the Birmingham Lions are in a heavyweight fight. Get the phone book out. Just ring everyone in there. Just get them <laughs> out of here. Listen to this crowd. They're going crazy right now. They're up for it. Hope oh. you guys are up for it. This is getting good. This is good, guys. And tweet us out. Tweet us out at Gridiron TV. Cecil Martin won. We want to hear what you have to say. What you got to say about this game. And now the kickoff. Touchdowns each way. Drive each in the second half. And it is those two points that separate them. The two point conversion against the missed point. Both technically extra points were missed. But at this end, the ball was on the four. They took it in for the two points. And Swansea are still here and making a lot of noise down there. Yes, they are. That is one happy group of Wales, folks. And one of these teams will be joining them with their happiness. And off they go. Down the left. Down the right, sorry. He's got the sideline. And that is a good return of 39 yards. Good return there. Right down the sideline. Out to the 40 now by the looks of it for the spot. So a good return by the clients. They're going to take over first down. Well, it was very tense, the atmosphere in the first half. You can feel the building now. It's building. The atmosphere is getting loud for the second half of National Championship football. Yep. Great presence of mind on number 31, if you can tell him what his name was, because when he got the ball, he slowed down to allow Grant Isdale to go get him a block. Yep. And that's really key, to have that kind of discipline. That is Andrew Steen with the return. Andrew Steen, great job. And Steven Summer looks to lead another scoring drive here. They look over. The shotgun. Put it back to his left. That's a snap. He's looking for a pass. Quick pass. And that's on the floor. Oh, oh, no. Come out them hips, baby. Come out them oh, hips. Please, please. You know, that's all the quarterback has to do. 
Now it looks like the Stony Cranks are going back to their old game plan, right? Let me just give it to you. Let me just get, you know, these short passes, five, seven yards, and then take a shot. And what's the Birmingham? What's the Birmingham Lions doing? Then but don't break. You can catch it in front of me, but I'm going to tackle you. Yeah. No need to panic at this stage or try and change the game plan. They can get those short passes. They just got to convert, keep moving the ball. You know, one thing I look for the Birmingham Lions to do is to put a little bit more pressure and try to get to the quarterback also. Dutch, oh, nice. it's back there. McDonald comes in motion, and it's given to McDonald. McDonald's got through one, hurdles someone, but that's a good tackle, but it's a five-yard gain. Good play there from the birthday boy. For the birthday boy, McDonald. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. Yeah, I'll let you sing. I'll, 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 I'll keep on singing over that's, here. That's all the singing that you guys are getting from me, all right? If you like my singing, tweet me at Cecil Martin 1, all right? If all you don't, I'm, tweet all, me at Cecil Martin 1. All I'm saying is third down and five, and then that's unfinished. Okay. <laughs> or if you don't like your singing, tweet me at John Sport, and you can ask me to sing. It's not going to happen either, but... <laughs> Let's hear a good touch in the backfield with a spread. Pump fake, and he throws it in, he's got Black open. And Black gets a deep pass. Great catch there. Great pump fake there. Pump fake the there. The middle. Brought the cornerback, just stepped in slightly, tried to jump the pass. Gives him enough time to get in behind. Alright, so I'm going to tell you right now. So the offensive line, the offense is looking over to the sideline to see what play they want to run. And what I think that Robert Orr and the other coach have recognized is that they're not disguising their defenses over with the Birmingham Lions. They feel as though they're strong enough to be in a base defense and play good football. And they are. But what Robert Orr and the coach are trying to do is find how to exploit wherever that middle safety is. Look, we're going to go back down here. Oh, Barrington on the carry, but the Lions, uh, as you say, the, li the Lions are playing a four-man line. They're a short passer. Very rare place, very rare places, and they've got three linebackers, and then they've got the safeties and the quarterbacks. And uh, it's the same every play, just about. So that's bringing up second down and six here, and the Clans been still keeping it up tempo, still trying to keep this ball rolling. See, I think he, I think they like the one-on-one -on -one matchup between Craig Black here on the slot, you know, and the defender there with the Birmingham Lions. All right, but even this this matchup down at the bottom with number seven against 22. I mean, I think they like those matchups, especially with the safety being over that way. That's a handoff to Isdale straight up the middle, and that's some good tackling there from the Lions. It'll be third and five at the 20. This is interesting. This is interesting. I feel like there's a setup happening here. Nice setup. Yep. You know, both these teams, uh, both these teams from an offensive standpoint appreciate balance, right? Being able to run the ball to set up your pass, but allowing your passing game to really be your bread and butter. And both these teams have done a good job of that. It's about keeping the defense honest, especially in this type of formation that they're seeing. A lot of off coverage on the side so this from is the Lions. Third down and four coming up. Look for Isdale in the slot, he's got a lot of room there. The motion comes across, it's a handoff up the middle of Brown. Brown's gone through a hole, he's gone past one, he's gone past another, he's down to the two yard line. Oh, that is a great play, great play. Yeah, that play has been very effective for the Sterling Klansman. You know, it's a little bit of a setup. You know? Talk about the blocking there, the, the offensive line. That, that, it's been tough for them to get in these blocks, getting these four yard gains. But that's why they weren't able to End of the third quarter. Uh, end of the third quarter. This just keeps getting better and better, this game. It's eight points to six. Birmingham Lions leading. But the Clansmen are knocking on the door right now. They're about to break through and retake this lead if they can keep this going. It's, it's stark contrast. This, this second half and the first half. First half, defensive on top. Second half, the adjustments have been made on offense and they're making these plays. This is it. And they're going up and down the field. Coaches are showing their hand now, showing their cards and just letting rip against the other team. And it'll be first and goal from the two yard line for the Klansmen as we start the fourth quarter. So keep your shouts coming in at Gridown underscore TV at Cecil Martin 1. We want to know what you think. We want to know the final score. Okay, we don't have Mystic Meg here, but we have you guys from home. Give us your thoughts on the final score. Who's going to win this game? And Stevenson will be in the shotgun. What? Watch for a QB keeper in the middle. We haven't seen him do it in all the day. So that could be something that they've worked on at the goal line. First and goal. And it is quick left. So it's first down and goal for the Klansmen. Twins left. Gets a ball to hand off up the middle. Barrington 
is stuffed at the line. Oh, a good stance there. Yeah, yeah. Barrington couldn't punch it in. So a good stance. Makes it back to the original line of screw. William Stone really leading the, 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 the block in there. The and this is a huge point for them. Manuel has to do that three more times here. And Stevenson will get second and two. Second and goal from the two, should I say. And they've gone in the spread formation now. Stevenson. Again, the run off the right hand side is there if they want it. Looks over. Oh. Well, timeout called there, so. The Sterling Klansman call the guys over, try and have a think about this one. It's a great timeout call right there. I mean, this is critical right now. I mean, you got to make the right decision. You know, I don't think they really have time to be guessing on this. Yeah, you got to be smart about this. You can't just throw whatever you've got at it. You've got to think about where the weaknesses are. He's got to get in the mind of Wayne Hill right now. What's he thinking? And how can I get around that? You know, the tough thing about the end zone or the tough thing about being in the red zone the closer you get to that 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 goal line like the tougher it gets because, because, because it shortens up today. the field now everybody is right there and so it's for them to try to utilize a little bit of a passing game here even though know that bread and butter is up the middle and i tell you what he can make an attitude call right here and say i'm i'm the next three plays i'm going straight up the middle that means it's my offensive line against your defensive line it's my fullback against your linebackers and try to punch it in there. Okay, you've got to trust your guys in the middle. You've got three chances from the two-yard line, or four. They've had one. Just keep running up the middle. So here we go. Second and one for the Clansman. Second and one. Stevenson is back there. We've got a couple of tight ends now. They're throwing in motion. Is it is in. Oh, yes, go, 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 go. Touchdown, Clansman. See, so you called it. Keeper up the middle. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, Stu. Stu, you call it. Yeah, I was just yeah, saying it. My apologies. <laughs> Stu did call it. Stu did call it straight up the middle, baby. Only thing I said was that he could go three times in a row. Offense against defense. O-line against D-line. We both got it right. I think, go. I think both we both got it right. Yeah, yeah. Got it right. Guys, we both <laughs> got it right. Don't worry. Nonetheless, <laughs> six on the board. Here comes the extra point. Oh, point man. Here. What a great drive oh the second half the drives have been unbelievable such a difference from the first half and the extra point attempt is good that takes a score and and everyone i think it's possible that the birmingham lions might have gotten a little bit of a hand on that bad boy i'm not sure it did sound good, but it still went through nonetheless 13 points to eight if number 77 is fired up I know that young man down there. I forget his name, though. <laughs> what's, what's number 77? What's his name? Number 77. Uh, Michael Locke. That's my guy, Michael Locke. There you go. Man, now that, that, that is an ultimate leader right there, okay? That guy, he came down to San Antonio, Texas with us as part of the All Europe Select team as well. I tell you, just, you know, a quality young man. I can see why he's fired up. But you see Birmingham out there ready for the return straight away. Already. We want that ball back. Already. We want to go and get a touchdown. We did it last time you went up. We'll that's do who, it again. That's who the Birmingham Lions are, man. They, they, they are not a team that messes around. They're not a team that's waiting. Okay, they're coming after you, all right? They're an attack mentality. All right, now they may be down, but anyone who knows about this team knows that they got a whole lot of fight in them. And this game right here, I mean, man, it, it's, it's, we don't have so much time to play. You know, and they're about to go after it. We just have to look at last year. I mean, jo Johnny Glover led two 70-yard drives in the fourth quarter from eight minutes to go to win the game from behind. We know he can do it. He knows he can do it. The Lions know he can do it. He's capable of it. They believe in him, and they won't give up until the end. Some great football, guys. Some great football. Give it a boot. And it's okay. kick. Not bad. Not Shot. bad. Oh, okay. He's got it. He's got it on the bounce round. He's got a run up the middle. He's got, got some room, everybody. Oh, and a good shoestring tackle there from yeah. number two. Okay, Let me tell you something. My man was almost gone. Okay, that shoestring is a tackle that doesn't happen. It's possible to the But it's great field position for Johnny Glover, who has just let it drive down the field, and he'll be wanting to do it again. We know he can do it. We've seen it so many times from Glover in this stadium. 
All right, first down and 10 for the Lions. They're back on the football. That's going to be Glover in spread. He's going to pass left. He's going to run left. And he takes the three yards. He realized the pass was quickly not there and just took it, took it down three yards. Bang, have that. Really smart, really smart, you know. And uh, I mean, the teaching by these coaches, both these coaching staffs, to help these young people who probably haven't been playing a game for a long time, but just displaying that football knowledge. Uh, it's trips right now for Glover. Low snap, he throws it wide. Good coverage there, he's straight across his number 52. Right on it is Joe Dwarbly. Joe Blay with a tackle, and it's now third down and seven. Jojo, that wasn't just a tackle, that was a hit. You heard it all the way up here. Now, I will say that I think Wayne Hill really has to be careful with that type of pass against this type of a defense, because it hung up there a little bit, all right? And so the quick hitting passes, as well as the quick hitting run, will be most effective at this point, I think. As Glover is now in spread. He's gone on the option play again. He options it to Julian Morgan. He's got some room to the outside. He beats one. Can he get down the sideline? No great tackling, great coverage there by the Klansmen, the linebackers, and defense. And it'll be fourth down on the 50. Fourth down five, put it away. Try to put pressure back on the That was a great offense. tackle by number 16. Who's the, or is that 19? 19, Grant Isdale. Grant Isdale all over the place. All over the field making plays. Nice because the running back for the Birmingham Lions now, he's a good running back now, and the option has been very effective for the Birmingham Lions. They've really played it to perfection. He seemed to have the space out there, but it was closed down well by the Clansman's defense, and now a punt. Punt has been something of an adventure for the Lions on a couple of drives. I would not put a fake punt all right, past Wayne Hill, so watch for it. Okay. He punts it, and it's going towards the sideline, and it's Got a good roll inside the 20. Get away, get away. Get away from that All ball. Right. All right. Deep. It's, got, it's going to be a long drive that now for the Klansman. Yeah, somehow. We would like to take this opportunity to apologize to Chris Bob. Okay, so back on the field, change of possession. Let's see how this game pans out here. It's starting to get very back and forth, but. Uh, what does Sterling need to do on this one? They just need to keep doing what they're doing. I mean, those short passes have been working for them and have been moving the ball with ease. I mean, second half, they haven't been stopped. Just keep doing what they're doing. And, and you've got to expect that uh, Dutch Stevenson is just going to throw the, the simple passes once more. Yeah. So here we go. It's first down and 10 for the Klansman. Stevenson is in the shotgun spread formation. Drop back hand off in the middle. That is Barrington. Barrington yeah, a big hole. Barrington is away. That's a good 20-yard run. Great run, run from there from Barrington. Yeah. Great blocking up front by his lineman. A huge hole for him to run through. It was a huge hole. Just opened up for him. And he was straight through there was Matthew Barrington. Wow, straight up the middle. And I want you guys to notice something about what Matt Barrington does when he runs the ball. He has two hands over the ball as he gets through the line of scrimmage. And even five, ten yards past the line of scrimmage. That is great discipline in ball handling. Definitely, as Stevenson looks again in the shotgun spread formation. It's another handoff to Ale Matthew Barrington. Just a couple of yards this play. Lions are just doing well, just to play a play sometimes. Yeah. So they've got to keep them aware of Sterling trying to set them up on anything. So a big run up the middle, going up there again. But Wayne Hill and the coaching staff or wise enough to try and spot any trends or any traps that Coach Orr is trying to set right now. I think you're yeah. right. I think you're right on that. Wayne Hill is extremely smart as a coach. And he understands the question will be, will Robert Orr go back to those quick hitting passes in order to get down the field? And I think that Wayne Hill, I think he realized he's got a couple minutes in before he's going to have to get a turnover if they continue to march down the field because the clock is running. Stevenson out of the shotgun, looking at pass, looking right, quick pass, gets a few yards, but it'll be a crucial third down, that is Craig Black again. There you go, there you go. 
straight flat with a reception. So it's third and short. This is a big play for the Birmingham Lions to get that ball back. It really is. And, you know, as we look at Craig Black, who's the president of the Sterling Klansman team years ago, started off this game really rough, dropped a couple, has really emerged and picked up some really good plays. We, we said earlier on that it would be some plays for him to make later on, and that just has so proved. Mm, you're right. Stevenson again in the shotgun spread. Seems to be the favourite formation for the Klansman right now. McDonald comes in motion across the formation. Fake hand off to him and it's to Matthew Barrington and it's short of the first down. Well, this is our extra play off the take off the jet swing. Gave him a couple, but it's not going to bring up first down. Fourth down now. It's a big, big call time. You've got to put it, surely. It's a, it's a bit of a uh, it's a bit of a bread and butter play that they've had some success with the Sterling Klansman. I don't I, I don't see it as being a bad call at all. I think it was just good defense by the Birmingham Lions. I mean, they they stuffed it. You know, they they stuffed it like they're supposed to. Yep. You know, and the interesting thing here is with this punt, I think that Robert Orr really has to put the onus and 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 his confidence in his defense. You know, to be able to handle the, the charge by the Birmingham Lions offense. Well, right. it's got one of the best in the country, so it's not too hard a decision. As the punt is away. Now, depending on how deep they can get these guys oh, he's down left there. It, he's left it. Oh, and that is inside the 10. You've got to take that ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, great job, great job. But there was another five to seven yards I think he might have been able to, to get. But that's cool. That's cool. No, let's not be greedy. Okay? Great coverage. All right? No one needs to be greedy. Um, I will say this, guys. Look for the Birmingham Lions to take a couple of shots, okay? Look for them to bring back their bread and butter option. And maybe even an option pass. Take the option, drop back. We used to run that play at the, at the University of Wisconsin Madison. That's right, Badgers. <laughs> Gotta love those Badgers, don't you? Yes, I love my Badgers. The University of Wisconsin. Drop back on the pass, quick pass. On the screen, oh, he's going to intercept it! Unbelievable! Unbelievable! Ladies and gentlemen, unbelievable! You talk about two teams going at it, going at it. I think that was number 50 who makes that play. I wonder what his name is because number I will never forget that name. Austin Jacks. Austin Jacks. Now, now, ladies and gentlemen, the game is not over. You can see the excitement and there's room yeah. and reason for excitement. Then we're going for the quick screen pass there. You're absolutely right there. You're saying it's not over, and immediately Rob Orr on the sideline is calming his guys down. He says, it's not finished yet. You can have a quick cheer now, but then get refocused. But what an amazing play there. That's an incredible play. Trying to set up a screen, and he snipped it out perfectly. But the presence of mind, sometimes a big man gets that ball, they just go down. No, he wanted the score, he made his way in the end zone. And there's nothing that anyone likes more than a big man with a football. He actually had one earlier in the season, just before Christmas, ripped it out of the running back's hands, took it to the house. So he's done it before. Unbelievable game. Now I will say that part of that, part of that was the pressure by the defensive line and getting a presence back there in the backfield. But man, a great play by that linebacker right there. Didn't we tell you it was going to be a great game? We did, we did. Really Second is. off, we said it was going to happen. But another thing there, the punt came in very deep in territory. That had not got on the screen pass, which may not be used further in the field. And, and that is a huge play. Special teams making the difference right now. The score is 20 to 8, so that's 12 point difference. That is two touchdowns. Now, let's everyone understand, okay? The Birmingham Lions offense is extremely explosive. Now, we have not seen a whole lot of that, but we've seen enough of it throughout the entire year in the playoffs and in this game to know it is not over. Do not tune out. As the kickoff is going to go deep, it's towards Rowden again. Oh, he's down on his knees. He would have been down by contact if he'd taken it there, but he gets up and gets some yards. He's got past one. Ooh, that's a huge big hit. hit and number 50 comes up with the big hit. Who is number 50? Austin Jacks. Austin Jacks. Austin Jacks. I know his name. I just want to make sure everybody watching knows his name. It's Austin Jacks. He came to play in this fourth quarter. <laughs> oh, man. I you know, know, that's the great thing that he's out there on special teams. He's a starting middle linebacker running down on special teams. Great. So Johnny Glover's got a chance to respond now. We know he can do it. We know 
He'll just put that out of his mind and he'll get going now. And it's a spread. He's looking to pass. He's got an open receiver. That's a great pass. And that's a late hit. And, that and gets hit. Gets hit hard. Now, I think that's a, that's a, that's an interesting call. That's an interesting don't, call. Don't I, I think. I thought I thought it was a momentum there. There's nothing yeah, can't really get yeah. Out the there's way. no way for 46 to know that he does not have the ball. No, you know, not whilst his back's turned to him. Right. He's right. Like, I mean, he's just trying to make a play. You know. So, but there's two flags down there. So. So it's a first down. So that's oh, what both called. It. Okay. Well, you know what? I mean, look, the refs have done a great job in this game. We can't fault that. I think they're going to go back and look at the play and watch film. They'll look to get better just like the teams look to get better, you know? Look at the confidence of Johnny Cobb there. I'll just throw an interception for a touchdown. No, I'll throw one over the middle again. I'll get it there. And he did well. It's a handoff up the middle. First time we've seen number 12 in the backfield. That is Juan Knowles. You know, it's an interesting play call at this time period. You know, what the viewers, it's important for you guys to know that we do not have a timer here. So we're relying on everyone downstairs and, and others to let us know how much time is on the clock. And so, you know, going up the middle is an interesting call at this point. Yeah, and they're really raising the tempo right now. Birmingham straight back out of that huddle into the line. They want to keep this tempo high. A little bit in the spread. Dropping back, he's looking left. He's got a throw, great pass, great hit, but he stays on his feet. That is Stefan Rowden, I do believe, again. Let me tell you something, that was a great throw by the quarterback, great catch by their, their president, their captain. And you know what? A great job of him holding on to the ball because, as you see, Absolutely. the Sterling Klansman are trying to get that ball out, aren't they? Yep. And it was a big hit from the corner as well, coming across. He hit him on. Rowden just stands there, takes it, and gets another few yards after yeah. that. Rowden is tough now. You can't just take him down with one hit, even though the hit was big. <laughs> Man. As Johnny Glover in the spread again, looking to go down the field once more the Klansman. Slow snap. He's got a roll right. He's got a chance to get out of bounds. He's going to throw it. Oh. He should have thrown that a bit earlier. Just out of bounds for me. The flags everywhere. Wow, so... Rather making the run. Well, great pursuit by the defense there. Cutting off his options for the pass. And then finally when he tries to run, bringing him down. But that is a late hit call on 55 of the Klansmen. That's Alexander Shilakadezi. I got that eventually. You got it, baby. You got it. That was a good job. I I'm proud of you and appreciate it. I will say this, though. Maybe the refs are trying to make a statement that we don't want this to get out of hand and we don't want there to be too many late hits. And so, you know, look, it's a fine line and it's tough what they do. And so, I, you know, I'll say it's a good call and, and let's just deal with it, you know. Uh, good defenses like the Sterling Klansmen and the Birmingham. Lions, they know how to overcome, so play. The thing is, penalties stop the clock as well, and that helps Lions hugely at the moment. Mm. Uh, as Glover is in the spread again, they'd be looking to take advantage of this press coverage or just hand it off up the middle. Wow. It's turned, and that is no number 32. Knows. Stuns him right in the middle. That's Jack Rice on the tackle. Jack Rice. Now, the presence of mind of reading that play and hitting him on his side of the line of scrimmage. I mean, that just says that's some great defensive play. And he's doing that from the safety position. Okay, from the safety. And he was not blitzing at that time. All right, now, oh, no, I guess he is a linebacker. Okay. He was kind of back a little bit. Number 32 is usually safety number. Man, did he fill that hole. I see him we go. It is spread for Johnny Glover again. Press coverage on the outside. He's going to look to go over the top, surely. He throws it deep. There's no one there. He's got What a catch that is. Hayhurst. Hayhurst with a catch in triple wow. coverage. Wow. wow. Everyone, I want you guys to realize something. I want you to realize something, man. The quarterback, the quarterback, Johnny Glover, he stood in there by two big boys from the Stern and Clayton D-line. Just barreled down on him. And they hit that man hard. And this hard. has been an excellent reply from the Lions. From Glover especially, he threw an interception that close to goal and he could just go out of pieces. Not him. He's gone down the field and he's looking to punch it in now. It's so spread formation. So impressive. What's the receiver's name that's caught, that caught that ball? That is Hayhurst. Uh, Hayhurst did a great job holding on to that ball. Glover looking left. He's got a man open. He's thrown it. It's routed. It's a, a touchdown. touchdown. 
The Birmingham Lions is back on the board. What did we tell you here on Gridiron TV? Do not count the Birmingham Lions out. They are coming, baby. They are explosive enough, and they just did what they need to do to get another point on the board. See, it's important that we share our excitement on both sides. See, we're not here for just one team. We're here for the entire league and here for you guys who are watching the game. Wow, is this a great game. We just love great players. I mean, that, that catch down the sideline before to get them in that place. Uh, and then that pass to Raul, and he saw it. It was a great route combination as well. There was an outside receiver came in, leaving that open for him to run in the flat. Uh, and and, he, and that's, that's what we saw earlier in the first game. That was the exact same route that was intercepted for the Bears, for the Hoya Bears. This time he put a little more air on it, put it in the corner, and it's down. And that's 2015. And it's, it's, it's getting exciting, even more now. It's really exciting. This game is not going to let up. It's going down to the final whistle. And spare a thought for us, we have to come up with our Good Iron TV MVP for this game. Oh, so many candidates right now, aren't there? I've got, I've got a list of all of them. <laughs> <laughs> now, there are quite a few of them out here. And, and what's interesting is this whole second half, I mean, it's, it's been a tale of two different games. You know, the first half was all about defense, and this half has all been all about offense. And not overtly offense because you got great defensive plays. Every touchdown has been scored. Every, every every big play, there's always a defender around. There's always somebody right there ready to take the ball away, intercept it, or do something to stop that play from happening. And whatever play does happen, whatever big play does happen, that's because that person was willing to make it happen. It's the execution in the second half compared to the first half has just been immense. And we're going to have an exciting finish here there. Who knows what's going to happen in the next however many minutes are left because we don't have the time. See, Stu, that's why you're a genius, man. You just, that's the word, execution. I was trying to find that word, but I ended up with 15, 20 different words. Isn't it all together? Yeah, yeah, just brought it all together, you know? <laughs> I hope you guys are having fun watching and listening because we are definitely having fun. I'm having fun up here in the country. We've had all day, and I can't wait to see what the outcome of this game happens as the kickoff goes deep and that could go out of bounds no it's stayed in bounds it's a live ball and the lions get down on it quickly we we'll have to say the pitch for having two games on it and, and the weather's probably been great in this area the past few days it's held up well it's looking good actually nobody's really slipping or sliding around everyone's generally keeping their feet well so that's good to see that you don't have problems with the weather or the pitch spoiling the game because this time last year we were supposed to have the finals it got delayed a month because this was covered in snow everything was covered in snow well i will say when i was talking to some of the guys who have been around for a while they were really happy that um it's always out here they feel like this facility this community like this is a staple of the university league when you make it to leeds you know we're trying to get to leeds we're trying to get to leeds you know and I believe it's a three-year deal in place for both sets of finals here now. So this is the home of British football, essentially. Yeah, for the University League, definitely. As here we go, the Klansman, Stevenson, hands it off to Matthew Barrington up the middle. And it's tackled there for a gain of four. They'll take that, they'll take that all day. It's good, they just need to reset now, make sure Birmingham don't capitalise on that and pounce on them again try and take back the momentum on this drive and just control because yeah, they do have the lead and they're yeah. certainly not a team for backing down and just resting on the laurels they're going to fight as much as they can but they just need to be still be smart about it Stevenson now in the shotgun if you, if you look at the defense of the Klansman they know they're going to have to get back on the field and do something possibly do. they're preparing for that final drive if it comes but Stevenson is in the shotgun look at the pass right quick pass and it's incomplete Incomplete, so third and five, a huge uh, third and five yeah, coming up now. So third and five, crucial play coming up. You know everyone, you guys might not be able to, to realize the you know, by watching this game, but you're looking at a very serious chess match between Robert Orr and Wayne Hill. It's not just coaching of their teams because the teams have to play, but they are, they are putting together an impressive chess match here. And motion by McDonald, picks out of it to Matthew Barrington, and it's short. It's going to be fourth down and five. 
Wow. And Ben Lucas getting the ball back. Big number 50, the linebacker for the Birmingham Lions. Just stuffed that one. Just sniffed it out and put his nose in there. What's that great man's name? Maxwell Stevens Pettijon. All right, Maxwell? Yep, Maxwell Stevens Pettijon. All right, well, that's, I'm impressed that you can say that last name, man. I gotta say, his parents are probably really pleased that you tried and I didn't. <laughs> that's the punt. Crucial punt after we saw the last punt inside the five. They've got to take it. As the punt goes deep, it's a decent grubber kick. Oh, was that hit him? Oh, and he gets across there. It must have hit. It might have hit one of the Birmingham Lions, but they didn't realise. A 21, that's a heads up play there by AJ Crabb. That is a heads up play by him. That really is. Better safe than sorry, right? Yeah. Going out, conceding out, possibly how long he's and here we go, Johnny Glover. He did it last year. Can he do it this year? Lead again, winning possibly drive. He's in the spread. Shotgun spread formation. Drop back. He's looking left. Quick throw. He gets it there, oh. and it's Rowden again. They're trying to get that ball out. Yeah, As you yeah. say, the Clansmen were going for that ball. Great hands, great hands by that guy. Number seven, what's his name again? Stefan Rowden. Stefan Rowden, the team president. I rarely see him go down. I mean, usually when he catches the ball, it takes five guys to stop him, and then he still doesn't go down. They blow the whistle, and then that's it. There's a little bit of pushing and shoving going on now, and uh, hopefully they can curve that a little bit and display more sportsmanship. As Glover drops back again, looking left, it's to, towards the outside, and that's a good. Yeah, he's got past one, but he can't get past another. That Don't is over there. But that was, that's a, they're looking for those quick passes again, and their glove is forty. He knows how to get the ball there. The quick hook, uh, brutal slap the, 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 the coverage is off back. Yeah. And it would almost appear that Wayne Hill is taking a page out of Rob Warren's book. Do you want to do the quick hit? No, you do my quick hit. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, he's got one minute and fifty-five seconds left in his game to turn that idea into at well, least six points to win it this is, game. It is but identical to last year. He had to do this in the last two minutes last year, and this quarterback knows how to do it. Wow. So this may be, ladies and gentlemen, the last series of the game, possibly. As Glover is in the shotgun spread. First and ten. He drops back, looking to pass. He's looking over the middle. He's looking to run. The defense gets there. Oh, and that's huge. Wow. Number big number 50 and big number 60. Austin Jackson again. Austin Jackson, oh man, Gareth. He is on fire right now. And that's a timeout for Birmingham. Birmingham Lions take the timeout and they have 53 yards to go for the score, the go ahead score. Yeah. Big Gareth McCall is coming out of the game. That is a big loss out of the middle. Tough, hard nosed defensive captain there. And then my man Jax, just another impressive tackle and play from the defensive side of the ball. Second down, my friend. Second and 12. Glover will look to go back. You see Grant Isdale here covering on the outside. He's looking left again. All of his passes look at He's going deep. He's going deep. It's out of bounds. You know, we've seen quite a few balls go far out of bounds. I'm thinking maybe the higher the ball is, the more the wind gets a hold of it. Yes, we, we get to feel the wind up here and we're in the stadium. It's got to be doing something up there as well. Yeah. It's just trying to find a balance between giving the receiver enough time to get under it and pass his defender, but not too much. It's going to drift out of bounds there. So it's a difficult throw to make. So it's third and 12. If, if I'm the offense, I'll take, I'll take a six yard game and get that fourth and manageable. But, Maybe they want to go deep as he drops back. He's looking left again. He's got an option. There's a flag on the player. Rowden's there. Rowden beats one. Rowden beats two. And he gets the good six yards. And the flag is on the play over there. Oh, if this is a holding because the flag is in the direction, in the area of potential holding, oh, this could be devastating. Devastating. And it's a big, and this will be a big decision. It will be a big decision for coach. Does he, does he knock them back and, and give them the second down? Or is he where it is and take third down? Exactly. It's a big, big decision. Good I think decision. it'll be actually fourth down if, if he lets the Hold place down. It. It would be. 
They're gonna, they're gonna do it. They're gonna take the play. Is this the time to call a screen? Well, he's he's taking it, and I think it's the right decision because Birmingham has adopted that idea of taking the short passes bit by bit downfield. But now they can't do that. They're forced to go deep downfield, so it cuts out a lot of options. They can go for something like a screen, but it puts a lot more pressure on Birmingham now. The big thing that could happen here is we've seen all day pass interference if they throw a deep ball. I think that's a great point though, Alan. I think you, you hit it on the head. You know, I think I would have backed it up too as I looked at how much... He's looking left, he's now got the right. He plays a quick screen, but that's a big hit. Wow. And they're going back. Oh, he's down. Big play right there. Wow. You got it again. They threw the screen, but Sterling oh, were all yeah. over that. I'm reading this. No, do it. Just own it over here, everybody. <laughs> that should be a head coach. You that? ain't got broadcast <laughs> like this in a long time. <laughs> all right, everyone. This is arguably the final okay. play okay. of the Bucks okay. University League Championship. Interestingly enough, the Sterling Klansmen are up 20 to the Birmingham Lions, 15. So one minute, 14 left. Birmingham take the timeout. It's fourth down and about 25 yards to go. For me, you just throw it up for grabs and hope for passing interference because I don't know whether Johnny Blumen can throw it that far. No, they're going to have to be really smart about this, find the gap and just hope for some luck. That's interesting. So he hasn't really been known for his uh, his ability to throw the deep ball, even though he throws a good middle range, 15, 20. Yeah. Um, I, I haven't seen him with the arm strength to throw the ball 40 yards in the air, which is what he'd have to do to get a first down. Right. The catch and run, possibly. But that is always risky boy on fourth down. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't this just a Hollywood finish? Six points wins it, fourth down and long, end of the game. This is where character comes out right now. And here we go, spread formation. Sterling is only rushing three guys, mighty only rushed two. Yep, they rushed he's, three. He's going to throw it deep, he throws deep. He's throwing it deep. He does have the whole interception. He's getting interception. Intercepted. Intercepted. And number 25 gets the interception. And he goes around. He threw it. He threw it. He got it. He, got it. He, got it. he stayed patient. He knew it was coming and he's got it. Ashley Hopkinson with the game ceiling. Ashley Hopkinson. Oh, look at him. Ashley Hopkinson with the emotion has basically fallen out. These teams, these these Sterling Klansmen have been together for a long time and the emotion that they have put into each other as a family and what they went through last year and, and through this entire season has him emotionally drained with happiness, everyone. It's a beautiful thing. And That's here come the knees, victory formation time. And Unbelievable. What a heartbreak for Birmingham right there. They have, they've shown such class and be able to do this last year and times before. They are so good at maintaining composure, they first, just couldn't get it done here. The first snap under centre for the whole game coming up. Wow. And he takes the knee. And we've got to figure out who our MVP is going to be. Wow. And this is going to be a tough one, so stay tuned because it might be an interesting it one. It might be a long discussion. Yes. It will be. We need your help right now. A few seconds left. Send us your nominations. We're, we're listening to you guys. Yeah. Let us know who you think should be an MVP. All right. We're, we're, we're passing the book to you. <laughs> you know, let us know. Let us know. You know, tweet, send it on Twitter, Gridiron TV, and Cecil Martin One. Let's have some fun with this one. Unbelievable. In the meantime, second down. That's the next knee. Around, ladies and gents, we're going to get some interviews with the players. And that is the and game. That's the game. Sterling Clans are your national the champions. That's the first national championship in 11 years for the Sterling Klansmen and the Scots make it a Celtic double today. It really is and you can see the passion, the fans, the alumni, the alumni are watching at home, no doubt going crazy for this right now. But, but the, the Lions players on the field Gave them a good handshake straight away, sportsmanship on show straight that's away. It. That's it, that's brilliant. A lot of respect between these two teams and it's great to see that. As, but it's, as the Klansman crowd down here look ecstatic with the victory. 2015, it ends. Wow. wow, wow. I mean, I first time I went to Sterling 
to see these guys to do a little combine and training session was about three or four years ago. Um, I even got to go before that when Robert Orr said, you got to come to, you got to come to Scotland and see my kids. And here we are four years later. At that time, they were just a blip on the map. Just a team in Scotland just playing ball with not a whole lot of respect, not a whole lot of regard. And over the years, just sticking with it, the culture that Robert Orr has created there, the family atmosphere that he has created there, and that team has created with themselves. Unbelievable to see how they have been able to emerge. You just have to look at the alumni there. They're all there waiting for them. Came on running on the field and just an unbelievable victory for Sterling who have been so close for a few years now. Yeah, and they're knocking at the door and now I think it shows people that they are real serious contenders well, in the UK that they can stand up against the likes well, of the and the and other top teams. Congratulations to the Sterling Clansman! I'd like to give a chat here. Coach! Coach! Can we get a word with you? Coach Orr, congratulations. You are the national champion. Tell us about, tell us about your game plan today. What were you thinking before the game? Right, right now, I want to say a fact. Okay, you need to have a word with a few people. Who is it? Who's going to be here? So we, we're just getting ready up here. We're going to head down to the sidelines right now, try and get some sideline interviews for you. Speak with Coach R, speak with our MVP. It's been such a hard task to pick out an MVP, but the man who made the huge play down near the Birmingham goal line converted to a touchdown. Big plays on special teams, both on punt and kickoff. He's been all over the field. It's our man, number 50, Austin Jacks. Congratulations, you are Good Iron TV MVP for today. Yes, an unbelievable game for him. That was the defining point of the game. At that point, it was a one-score game. That really sealed it for the, the Sterling Klansman. And it was an unbelievable play. Catch it and run in. Austin Jacks, he'll remember that moment for the rest of his life. He really will. We're glad we covered this game. and. Some of the messages we're getting from home, it's unbelievable. We're able to watch and follow the support and you couldn't ask for a better lineup and a better game really. No you couldn't it. The first half was just what we expected. Defensive, defensive battle. And then the second half, both teams made the adjustments and they went down the field on will. The only defensive play in that second half was Austin Jacks conversion there yeah like, um, like Cecil said tale of two halves people just putting game, everything on the line Absolutely for this final amazing. game just doing Thank whatever you. they can the and it's the clansmen that come out on top the and, and the Titans so are still strong. here so we've got our two two teams both in green both in green who have won, won today it's a green and white day and uh, even, even when uh, the, the quick kick clash they were the ones in green so it's a double green day it is indeed so as we said earlier, if you're starting a new team at a new university, just change the colour of green and you can go them. <laughs> but you see a lot of respect by these teams now. It's, it's going to take a while for them to get across the field because they all they all want to say hi. A lot of them will play for Great Britain students together. And it's just an incredible game of football. It, it, it was hard to top last year's game, but this is certainly up there. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, it's a brilliant example of what student football can be like here. And, and um, you, you, you know, we've, we've said so much about these guys and, and the commitments, both from the players and family. the coaches. Well um, we've seen sure fine examples in the first game. game. Guys from Swansea just working so hard all year. Guys guys from the Bears well. are not only applying themselves to their studies in the football, hey. but also to the communities, oh, helping people in flooded, affected areas. And then both these, you've got uh, guys like Glover, and uh, Dutch Stevenson, who've been with the teams yeah. for so long and, and built that reputation. Uh, Dutch Stevenson can, can say he's still the best quarterback in the game. He's the one with the championship ring. Well, there it is. That's, that's the kind of talk that boosts confidence in your team as a quarterback. They need to know that you are going to fight for them and that you're confident in what you can do. And that's just paid off right there, particularly with that touchdown that opened up their account in the corner to Isdale. Yeah, there was some great individual players. We talked about Austin Jackson, but that sideline catch and run down the sideline was 
quite magnificent from Sterling and that play in this corner the bottom right hand corner from uh, the Lions when he was in triple coverage yeah. got his feet inbounds kept hold of the ball couldn't get in but they converted a couple plays later uh, and I have to say Stefan Rowden for the Lions it would have been in a shout if they had won for MVP because he had an incredible game So the team's going to split up, hopefully, hopefully, they won't be too long in the puddles. As we can, you can see, it's starting to close in now. I think the game's starting to finish just in time. It ball. is. We had a brief moment of sun, a little bit of warmth, a really, a really nice vibe here in the stadium. Uh, now the floodlights are on, it's starting to close in, a little bit misty here in Leeds, but a nice end to the evening. And we'll be getting some uh, sideline interviews. Cecil's down there waiting for the MVP, Austin Jackson, the head coach as well. Please. And and it, just like to talk about the two games, the play at championship, it was the same last year. The, the first game seemed to be all fun. A lot of the atmosphere seemed to be upbeat. Everyone was up for it. And then the tension builds for the latter game, the national championship. Yeah. And, and then it just seems to seems to call it, like come to culminate in a, a fantastic game. And here are your Sterling Clansmen applauding their fans, applauding their alumni, their ex-teammates, their former teammates. Who all made the trip. Family made the trip. They are really committed to this team. And that's led by Coach Orr and his philosophy of just building an amazing program, building trust in everyone so that they will well, give everything they've brought to this program. And it pays off. And this is one of the last of the Sterling Clansmen or the Birmingham Lions. We'll see them somewhere around the playoff championship game next year. Yeah, they really well, so. And a lot of these players, and of course we're going to the senior league and, and honing their skills in that as well. Absolutely. And uh, Coach Orr, have you got any words to say about Robo? Uh, as, as the Lions are huddled over there. Well done, Mr. Jack. Well done, sir. Wayne Hill, this is three finals in a row, they've won one, they've only won one, 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 one. He'll be getting them pumped up for next year, and really? that work will start next week. It really will, the guys are, will be so disappointed, but they can take away Hopefully so much from much this year. And it's moments like this that, that d define people, uh, particularly the seniors. It's unfortunately that the world are missing really. out on the title, but they can still look back on a, 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 big, a really good career with the yeah. team. They, look, they all have rings from last year, the ones. The, the, the rookies will have their chance as well in the future. So that, Lion, that Lions whole organisation is unbelievable and they'll be back stronger next year. As the Klansmen have huddled up for themselves now. And we're just waiting for them, all of them to do their huddles, all do their team. And then we'll have them for some interviews. As preparation has already started on the pitch. Uh, the girls were not taking any time to get on the pitch and start rolling it again. Are you happy? Very happy for the clansmen. Well, we saw the clansmen huddle before the game. I think they have an after-game tradition as well, so we might see that too. Did he come down this morning? We travelled down this morning. And, and we have to say the crowd's built during the day. It's, it's been a decent crowd today. Free entry, which is good of the league to put free entry on. So you can two games of free American football, which can't complain, of course, our coverage to those who couldn't make it today. Yeah, indeed. And, and we've got a few, few, um, few sponsors for today that we can give a few shout outs to now. New Orleans jerseys, of course, always help out. AFD as well. Yeah, guys, guys who we've worked with in the past who share the, the similar vision of trying to promote football in whatever way. So just offering us their assistance, uh, advice, and just being able to help us give more back to you guys watching at home. Uh, and that's really appreciated as us as a small organization trying to build this as much as we can. Um, and I also trying to build the sport in general, so um, we've heard a lot from American Football Development today, uh, as well as American Football UK, New Orleans, and Rudy and guys here are fantastic. Um, so there's, there's so many people that do a lot for the sport, and there's a lot of potential that we see in it. And that brings the to our 17th championship game as well, and, and you've been here for all of them. How's yeah, it has. So going from uh, November of a couple of years ago in a small studio with minimal equipment, trying to look at what we can do for the sport, and then just taking the bull step of going to the live broadcast, 
first one would have crippled then the Sheffield. Um, I think going two nights without sleep to get it to work, made it work, and now we are here. Okay. So we'll leave it I absolutely love Thank what we do much. here, and I really hope we can do a lot more for people out there in the coming months and years because it, it you know, people enjoy it. it we're we're bringing this game to the rest of the world. You can guarantee the players from the day are just going to come, go and have a look at, see what they do, they're going to watch it tomorrow uh, when we get the highlights up online. Uh, and, I, I think it's great all round and, and here come the Birmingham Lions to pick up uh, their, their runners up medals. Yeah, so. What a display today. The excellent Seven squad. Seven rounded, outstanding today. Guys there. It makes a ch it's a change from the walk they made last year. But they'll be back. They'll always be back with the Birmingham Lions. Yep. Angus Hodgkins with a good game as well. Likes of Stefan Rowden. Angus Hodgkins. Sam Glover at quarterback. Johnny Glover all going up there to get their medals. Not the medals they wanted, they wanted the same ones from last year, but unfortunately for them, not to be. As the Sterling fans will stand there and applaud as do all left fans. It's been a great atmosphere. I mean, it's been hard on the field. They've been playing each other hard. Some late hits, some personal fouls, but off the field, everyone gets on. Straight after the play, they shake hands and get on with it. It's great to see. So there they are, the medals handed out to everyone in the squad. Running back to the Birmingham Lions. You can see a lot of players there actually. They're still, some of them look really disappointed, but others do have a sense of pride that, in spite of this result, it's been fantastic for them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, a lot of the rookies will be like, this is our first national championship game. Hopefully the first in many. It's a proud achievement. They've won 11 games this year. They've just come up against a team who on their day had that five point extra and had that one big play that has made it, made it, made the difference. That one big play has essentially made the difference. And, and on another day that goes for the Lions. But a day the clans will get it and the clans will get their title. Into a, into a, Thank you very much, Jay. Appreciate it. As here come the rest of the Lions, there's number 43, Matthew Clayton, number very 96. Delvin Wands in there, number 19, the Thomas Delvin Anderson. Player. I could go through them all, but I don't think I have the time. Alex Henley Good there. All picking up their medals. He doesn't have a number on. You'll notice as well, all the, all the uh, coaching staff have gone to the end and they'll be through in the next uh, two minutes or three minutes. But for someone to build such a huge coaching staff, we mentioned before, it takes the pressure off of coaches. You get uh, much more one-to-one -one time with your coach when you have really specific coaches relating to every position and, and everywhere around. So to be able to build a staff like that, that that can help you and assist you, it's, it, it really makes a difference for a head coach. As uh, we just saw there, number four, Julian Morgan had a good game today. He's just gone through and got his medal. As Birmingham Pilot has it's been a lot here. As we had come, all of them get a pick up the medals. There's William Stone, he had a good game on the line. Come out they were both unbeaten. It would have been the first time that they lost this year. This year it was Sterling's turn. Stone And it just shows you how big this team is, they're still going. Even the players who are injured are there. Big group of, uh, big group of alumni up there in the crowd. I can see Fermi Young Lions alumni. I do interest. There's Alex Wick, the backup quarterback. Greg Pearson, he had a good game, as we mentioned a few times. See players who graduated, coming back and supporting Joseph the... Joseph Haddock did well in coverage. Supporting their brothers. As did Sam Jeter. A 
And don't forget the offensive lineman there, David Shackleton and that bunch. They did a good job with uh, keeping that defensive line off their quarterback as much as they could. Be under no there's Jose yeah. Van Oosten, of course, there's Johnny Cover, our MVP last year. Yes. And here come the coaching staff. By design, six years and years of hard work, excellent coaching, a good buy in from your college, which comes from a lot of work from their coaching staff. So, and very good trip home, there's Dylan Cazzo on that last trip, out of memories that have been earned here tonight. Yes. And certainly the player of the game had to be that, that that interception return for a touchdown by the big man Austin Jacks. That is, it's it's one of those defensive and instinctive moments on a defence. And it was just the impact of it in the situation of the game and the momentum changing element of it that made it so big. And yeah, those are the kind of memories that stick with you because for all of them they have the I was there when this happened moment in their minds now and of course on Phil and on Foto and everyone else is here. As the Lions go into the change rooms now they're disappointed but as we've said I've, as I've said many times hey there were questions there were so, questions where we go? it's the Sterling fans from now this team has come down to lead they made a statement and here we are national champions Alexander Shilakadze, I've got there eventually, it's been working for the whole broadcast, he leads it. the team. Then it is Blue Dutch Stevenson, the best quarterback in Britain, as he calls himself, and he's proved it tonight. There's Cam McDonald, the birthday boy. Stuart Keenan, the offensive line, don't forget them, 52. Yeah. See a few of the offensive Joy line Blank. here that have done such a good job at looking after Stevenson and also giving Bounch the opportunity to, to have some outstanding runs. There's Craig Black as well, the president is last day today and he goes away with the winner's medal. Okay, we're going to have a chat earlier. Coach Hall, congratulations. What a result. You know, and There's 71 giving you the thumbs up, that is George Rubio. Yep. Michael Locke coming from Bristol, as Cecil mentioned. Recruitment from around the country, finding these talented athletes and showing them that they can get a good education there, but also play for what is now the National Championship winning side. Definitely, it's a big pull if they want to go to university and you want to play American uh, football, if you play youth style, you look for the big teams, the Birmingham Lions and Sterling Clarkson and Clarkson have that national championship now as there's the big man, number 60, Gareth McCall. McCall coming from quite a talented family in sports, I believe. Uh, I was talking with him a little while ago and his brother has recently signed for uh, another professional rugby club. So he's, he's come from some good sports heritage. Talented family there. And all these guys will remember this day, they'll remember getting that medal. And, and it'll be a day they'll never forget. Unless they drink too much tonight for celebrating, then they might forget it. Okay. Uh, the good news is, this has been recorded, so it doesn't matter too much, but they will find out at some point. <laughs> they will get it. You know, it's surreal. Um, my, my coach is and I were in America. There's my man Duncan just because uh, he wears number five. I'll give him a shout out. He was also in college uh, before that, and he went into high school before that, and now he was, he was coaching at the three college. And he said, it doesn't matter where you win it, the feeling is exactly the same. He should know because he won a Super Bowl. Number uh, uh, three, Leroy Tunis has had a terrific season, actually, a real standout performance, and making the difference up front in a linebacker, an outside linebacker role for most of the games. I mean, the whole defence has been in phenomenal the year. They came up against the biggest challenge today and kept well the Birmingham well Lions to 15 points. Well it just shows you how strong they are. There's number 50. There's the MVP coming up right now. It's Austin Jacks, our MVP. And we're pleased to announce that the MVP for the championship game is Austin Jacks. And 
the stadium announcer gives their MVP to Austin Jackson as well, so we, we, we did the right decision there. We did, we're in agreement Austin with everyone there. The field, he, he got the expert advice today. He was all over the field and then that pick six was the item as, of the as game. As the coaches come and get their so deserved work. They've to worked Austin hard for, for 12 award. months. They haven't just started in September. They've been working hard for 12 months to get this team prepared, yeah. get the players written up, get the schemes written down. Now we like to ask even go, this is their the goal. Even go further than that, see some of them have been working at this for three or four years, yeah. building the foundations the for turning this club and this, this team and organisation into what was a the mid-level, mid-table team now into, into a, 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 a UK powerhouse. As, and they get their deserving medals. It's sometimes on the day players, you get caught up in the place, but the coaches have worked hard for that day in the sun as well. And this is their, there their, is. their as, as there is the trophy, the Neil Reynolds Ladies trophy. and gentlemen, they were asked the so, question, they answered it. This is Rob Orr. Your 2014 national champions, the Sterling Clansford! It's great to see the Bevy and Ryan's all stood there applauding and that just shows the spirit of the British game. Great respect. Thank you everybody. And Please that's 11 years in the game and that. 11 years since I've left the next trophy. Everyone. And Associate they'll be hoping it's not another 11 years until they left the next one. Thank you for a fantastic day. Good night. And we should have some interviews with Cecil Martin in any minute now. Indeed. It's really packed up there in the aisles. The, the team all want a piece of that trophy. We'll try and see if we can get that camera to follow through. And they're going through the tunnel there. The Lions fans are applauding them. Lions fans, Lions players. And, and it's As I've said many times, it's great to see. Yep. slowly but surely making their way down the steps. As there's a quarterback, Dutch Stevenson, who leads his troops away now. There's the sword, the claymore. And there's the trophy being lifted high. Just a, just a great day of football today. It's, it's been enjoyable with me, you and Cecil in the country booth. And it really has. Fun. It really has. I'd like to thank you. As I'd like to thank everyone involved in Good Iron TV today. Uh, not just us, but for the most part, the people working behind the scenes, so the people that don't normally get mentioned or seen, um, the camera crew, the editors, the social media side. I know it's, it's been going crazy on Twitter and Facebook. We've not seen much of it, but I know you've been having great conversations and we've seen some of the, the, the things you've been sent through, but we love that interaction with you guys. Uh, and we love the effort that our whole team puts in. So it's uh, it's been, quite a lot of preparation for us and for the last few months to try and get this all together for you. Um, we really, really hope that you've enjoyed our broadcast today. We're certainly going to come back again. We'll try our best to give you as much as possible. A big, big thanks to all the people who helped with the Kickstarter fund as well. Without yes. them, it'd be difficult to, to cover this in such depth. Indeed, we, we uh, always try our absolute best to cover it ourselves, but we love our fans and we love the support we get. And there we go, the Scots and the Welsh are victorious today. And they came out with a flag saying, this is our year. Yep. Turns out they were right. Yep, they've been saying it every game. It's part of their chance, it's part of their uh, the motto for the team. And they've believed in it and it's paid off. And now come the pictures, and they're all celebrating there. Yeah. Just make sure everyone gets in for the for the picture at the moment. The Lions going to go and pick up their stuff, and they'll be preparing tomorrow. Wayne Hill will be thinking, "What? Well, we're ready for next year, aren't we?" Yeah! And one last cheer for the Klansmen as the champagne is poured over Rob Orr. And there's our man Cecil right Cecil's in amongst the action. Right in amongst the action. 
you can't, can't, you can't keep him out of anything, can you? No, definitely not. It's been great having him here on the coverage today as well. Yeah, I know he's worked up in, in Sterling on uh, training camps and other elements. He knows the coach as well. He's very passionate about developing guys' talent and abilities. And uh, it, it's, You have to be careful not to get champagne on the suit, though. Indeed. <laughs> I'll be sending them a dry cleaning bill. <laughs> All right, so once Cecil is out of the pack, we'll try and grab a few of the key players, bring them down to our sideline camera, and we'll get a few words off of them. And we'll also present our Gridiron TV MVP award to number 50, Austin Jacks, who again made the difference on defense in what was a very defensive battle for most of the game. There were a couple of key plays that stood out in different elements that he, he showed why he, he needs to be there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we can talk about the touchdown all, all night if we want, but there was other players. He was making sacks, he was making great defensive plays, making reads, getting off blocks, getting through the offensive line and just causing havoc in the backfield. And that's, that's what you want from your defensive end. As we are going downstairs just about now, as Cecil Martin has got MVP, Austin Jacks. great so I came over and I'm really happy I did. So who did you play for in the States and what are you studying in school? It, I played for Tulane University and uh, I'm studying business management school. <sighs> what was it about the University of Sterling that attracted you to come from America to play football and continue your education? Uh, I just wanted to see something different and then I had a few opportunities but this sounded like the most complete and awesome opportunity to be able to go to school and still continue my football career so I think I made the right choice. What was it about this Sterling team that you found out when you got there, when you became a part of it, that really made you feel good about the decision you made? Uh, I think the team camaraderie and their hungriness to win. They had a real strong hunger to win, real competitive, and um, it was just it got real good guys on the team that seemed like, seemed like they were all fighting for a similar goal, so it was good. You talk about what you think you know the guys on this team especially the young guys who have only been playing for a few years have to continue to do to continue a tradition that now you guys have created uh it's just the hard work dedication putting in the tough hours better in their crafts in the off season and then listening to coaching being coachable and listening to these coaches because they definitely know what they're talking about this is your first experience being around united kingdom american football as they call it what would you say to young people who are playing football all over the united kingdom all over europe they need to do in order to get better and be in this type of situation i would say just hard work following the game watching the game whenever they can listening to people who know a lot about the game and and just getting introduced to the game because it's such a great game and it's really growing over here and I'm really happy to see that. So just keep following the game as far as much as possible. Walk me through that interception you got, man. Walk me through what happened, all right? Yeah, like was, from the bit from the beginning of it and then what you were thinking and then what you did. That was just slow motion, man. I saw the quarterback throw the ball and once I caught it I was it felt like I was running well, I kinda was running in mud, but it, it just felt like I couldn't move fast enough to get in the end zone and once I did, oh, it was such a good feeling. So happy, so happy man. It was awesome. Cool, man. Well, you are our MVP for the game at Gridiron TV. I'm going to give you this jersey. I'd like you to open it up, show it to the camera. You are our MVP, man. Turn it around. All right. You see it right there. No, you did an unbelievable job, man. Thank you very much for being with us. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. God bless. All right. Blessings. You the man, dog. <laughs> oh, you did it. <laughs> All right. Good job.
Ready? All right. Here we are with Ron Boy, the head coach of the Sterling Klansman. Big guy talking to me about the beginning, man. The first time when you took that job to be the head coach of the Sterling Klansman, what did you intend to do? And what was going on at that time? You know, I, I, when, I, when I got there, they asked me if I'd come across and give them a hand. And uh, I, I got there and there was 18 guys there. And, uh, you know, we managed somehow that first year. Uh, with 20, I think we eventually ended up with 24, 26 guys. We eventually went undefeated in the Scottish division, went out in the first round of the playoffs, and I said then to the guys, that's me, I'm hooked. And I said, give us five years and we'll win a national championship. And then we came here and we watched uh, Birmingham play uh, Newcastle at that time. And to me, that was the best student team I'd ever seen play football, ever. Uh, and, I, and I looked at my coach and I said, it won't be five, it'll take seven. As a joke. And here we are, year seven, and uh, we've done it, we've done it. It's like a fairy tale, man. It's like a fairy tale. You know, it's interesting you talk about coming to see Birmingham play years ago and now you're in this place. Talk about the main thing that you guys did as a team, the main thing in culture you created at Sterling to get to this level. I think just a culture of no excuses, you know. We're, we're, we're a small university. In fact, we're the smallest university that plays in the league. And uh, the first few years were really tough, but we just kept saying them, you know, you, you can't have that young mentality where everything's the easy way. You've got, you got to sometimes take the hard way and you've got to earn it. And uh, by God, they, they, they've certainly earned it now. They've earned it now. And for the, for the senior class especially, who their first year with us, we went four and four and it was a tough year. And I said to them, and a lot of, them, a lot of the other ones quit. And I said to the guys that, that are here today, I was like, if you just stick with it, if you trust us and stick with it, we'll get you to the dance. And uh, then it's up to you. And by God, you know, every, every one of them performed today and every one of them contributed today. It was just incredible, incredible. What a feeling. How much pride do you think this brings to Mar football players in Scotland across the board <clears throat> I think I think it brings a lot I mean I, I, I'd said um, in the press uh, earlier in the week that um, Glasgow managed to get to the semi-final um, and they, they, they lost just by a couple of scores there uh, and everyone we went up against them um, we went we met some really good teams in the playoffs and but we managed to dominate there as well but you know with the greatest respect to all of those teams we, we knew Birmingham would be would be the hurdle they, they've been there they've done that six times here they're such a good program they're so well run they really are and I love coaching against them because they adjust. Every time you do something, they adjust. Like when we were in America, it was like it's kind of like it's kind of like coaching like it was there. It's just it's just fantastic experience. So to win in that type of game just makes it all the all the more pleasurable. It really does. It's just amazing. Speak to all the coaches in the United Kingdom, all over Europe who have teams right now, and talk about what did it take for you as a coach to get them to this level, and what do they need to do and striving to do to get to this type of level. You know, when, 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 I, when I joined Stone, I really thought that, that I knew a lot about coaching and uh, now I realize how little I know about coaching. Uh, you gotta, you got to spend time on your craft. you just, you gotta, you got to spend a hell of a lot of time. The, the greatest thing for me is, is you must have commitment to the cause. The guys must be committed around you to help you. And my offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator today, they played for me in that first year. And now they're the coordinators and they worked. At, you have no idea. Every day after work, they were up at my house. And we were working from five o'clock to midnight and then two hour drive back home and everyone working through the night. It was just, it was incredible. They did so much work. So what I'd say to everyone all, all over who, who's interested in becoming as good as good as you can be, is you've got to surround yourself with people who are committed and then teach them. And if they've got the commitment, they'll want to learn anyway. Uh, and that's what we've done. That's what we've done. I'm so, I'm so happy, man, honestly. Tell me what it means for these kids to be student athletes going to school at the university level and playing this game and how the growth of the game from that side, kids getting to, trying to get better as, as, as professionals and better their life. Talk about how important that is. That's, that's critical to us. We, we, we have a rule at our school. I mean, if they start missing classes or if they start, they start getting behind, uh, we sit them. We don't, we don't let them play. And uh, we've done that a couple of times and it's really hard us in games when, when we started out with that ethos. But you know now it's it's just it's it's just not it's not an issue it's not an issue everyone goes to class everyone comes to practice and uh, it's just it's a non-issue now but we but we reiter reiterate it to them all the time you know this is great and they'll remember this for the rest of their lives but what they're doing in the university for four years will sustain them for the next 40 years and that's the important thing that's the important thing well congratulations robert or is there anything else you would like to say to anyone about anything yes i would go clan Woo, baby good job <laughs> That's Robert Orr, the head coach of the Sterling Klansmen and the champion, champion of Bucks. Peace. Blessings. Nice. All right, let me see if I can get